Why? Let's go! This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, you never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God damn it! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Fuck Boston! Oh! Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this draft spectacular week. Feel Good Friday, April 28th, 2023. The program starts now. Feel Good Friday. We're having one. This is also a very much overreaction Friday to the first round of the NFL draft that took place last night that was seven hours in length. Dive from Kansas City, oh, Missouri, yeah. and we were in the Thunderdome all night. Shout out to Red Panda. Yeah, shout out. Go, Red shout Panda. out to Red Panda coming shout in, earning somebody $50,000. Also, shout out to somebody who guessed the combined weights of me, AQ Shipley, Pac-Man Jones, and Darius J. Butler. We'll be running a video at the first commercial break, and I do believe it'll be a familiar number yeah. that comes out. I'm a lot bigger than people think. They're going to learn that <laughs> as well. I'm thankful and pumped to be back on this Feel Good Friday. There's a lot kicking off. There's a lot of news to chat about, and we're packed with guests. We'll have Kirk Herbstreit joining us in about 12 minutes. He was in Kansas City last night, was on a flight home this morning. I believe as soon as he lands, he's going to be joining us. Want to know what the vibes were like in yeah. Kansas City. What was the mindset like for the College Game Day crew that I missed mightily and was not able to be with because of the draft spectacular and his thoughts on the draft that it was. 31 players got drafted last night. There's a lot of conversation around a lot of teams. We were uber positive about pretty much everybody. Yeah. It was not like that everywhere from what, what I've been told. We'll have Jason Wright, obviously the president of the Washington Commanders. He will join us in the second hour. Can't wait to get his thoughts on where the team is, what they're drafting, and also what the future looks like under new ownership. That's right. Good for him. And then Ian Rappaport joins us in the third hour. What does he know? Is Will Levis getting drafted? What? He was minus 15 hunch to go in the top five. Yep. Moments before the draft kicked off last night. He is still available. We are now entering the second round. He was sitting in that green room. So damn sad. Yeah, it was so tough. sad. Had his lady with him, had his family with him, yep. and they had a close-up on his face the entire time. Is this guy going to get upset? Is this guy embarrassed? I'd say he was supposed to go to the top five. Yeah. He's out of the first round. Who knows if there's a home for him now? What does Hendon Hooker's future look like? Mm. There are some wide receivers left. There's some tight ends left. Five. There's a lot of great players still available. Second round, third round, kickoff tonight, 7 p.m. Let's go. We'll hear what Ian Rappaport's thinking. He's been in Kansas City for 15 days. I'm excited to hear what it's been like for him and how boozed up he's been every single night. What? The Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good to be back, boy. Ty, I, I don't think that this could be said enough, so I'm going to reiterate the fact that I just said to you right before we went live, absolutely crushed it last night as Mad Mel Pop. Go, Appreciate Ty. it. Thank you. J.J. Watt said it was your flu game, and I'll tell you what, <laughs> we don't know if that was a hangover game or a flu game. We know for you, you were battling a double ear infection. Your brain felt like it was going to explode. Your head was at maximum pressure. And what did you do for five hours? You fucking delivered, pal. Proud of you, Ty. Appreciate, Appreciate it, Ty. Boy. Appreciate it. I'm glad I could be here I, I really was i told you before the show i was very worried on like tuesday when i started not feeling great and then on wednesday was like the the most sick i've been in a really long time and i was you know just thinking like oh great you know just my luck this is gonna happen i'm gonna fucking miss the draft it's one of my favorite days of the year like you crush the draft and mm -hmm. I, i'm Every just year. i'm just happy that it went out with uh you know without a hitch and and i'm I'm very happy with the, with the show. Do you remember on, anything right? you said last night? Not really, to be honest. Okay, no. good. You did great. Hey, you yeah. need to know you did yeah. great. I appreciate it. And maybe just, it. just just move along and just yeah. you did great. That's probably what I will do. Just kind of flush everything, and we're we're on to Friday and the weekend, and then next week when it gets here. Hey, I'll tell you what. Iowa guy, now That's Green right. Bay I, Packer, kind of put you in a pretzel there for a bit, Mad Mel. It did after after. What wait. if Gun to Guns did that? Yep. Specifically to say fuck that guy in Indianapolis. There's a chance. I yeah. would respect it. I would respect it. I was in a bit of a pretzel last night waking up this morning. Feel great about it. Absolutely love it. I mean, hey, you need guys who can rush the passer. And with kind of the way everything played out, like you look at, you know, a lot of people were pissed off. Oh, it didn't take a pass catcher, didn't take a, a tight end, or, you know, one of these positions that they, they need to help Jordan Love. Like still available. Yeah, a lot it of seems them. like those guys were really overvalued by a lot of the, um, you know, like scouts and people who do mock drafts, like who, who were saying, hey, deepest class we've had in a really long time. Like, yeah, we had a little run on receivers later, but it, it gen genuinely feels like 
kind of the top 15 or so. Like, that's kind of who everyone saw in the top 15. And then after that, it was kind of a mixed bag. We got a chance to chat with Veach, GM of the Chiefs. He had the last pick of the night. We got a chance to chat with Tom Telesco. Mm -hmm. yep. Obviously, Tom Telesco had a Chargers pick in the 20s. They were live from a fucking mall, he called great it. Mall. Central, great mall. Beautiful mall. Don't know if that's where you should be doing a draft, but mm -hmm. hey, they're a professional organization. We are not. That's yep. right. Also talked to Ballard. Uh -huh. All of them said kind of went how we thought it was going to go, even though everybody thought it was an unpredictable draft. We had a guy that was up in the house of comps breaking down a lot of skill players and mm -hmm. secondary. Looks so fantastic. Wore a green suit, knowing you'd be in front of a green screen. <laughs> Still played. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, host of Everything DB and the Man to Man podcast, Darius J. Butler. Yeah, yeah, D-Bot. Oh, D-Bot, a we're, little surprising evening for the weapons and everything like that. You did great up there, though. You look so professional. Yeah, way to it was go, fun, Derek. man. I had to figure out that green screen. It was kicking my ass early. <laughs> uh, but I figured it out. Uh, it was fun, though. Uh, we got, like Ty said, we had to run on receivers late. Four corners came off the board. I think everybody expected, obviously, the top three. We got Jason right on. So Forbes was a surprise going before uh, uh, Gonzalez, Gonzalez. Uh, mm -hmm. I believe so. Um, but Banks, and man, sure. you know, so the no. four DBs, four receivers. Um, I liked it. And the quarterbacks. Obviously, the quarterbacks are always the story to draft. Um, we got Anthony Richardson. Definitely excited about that. Hell Thankfully, yeah. no surprise with the top two picks. And then uh, once again, we'll find out where Levis and the hooker ends up. Well, kind of a surprise whenever the conversation and the narrative started mm -hmm. cooking over the last yeah. couple of weeks. And Chris Ballard addressed that in his press conference after drafting Anthony Richardson. He said, it's, it's bull. I'm not going to swear. <laughs> he said, it's crap that these stories come out that aren't true, just try, try to bury these guys. These yeah. guys work their asses off to get mm. to this point. And then the week before the draft, two weeks before the draft, all of this bull, and he's, he finally just said it. Here's Chris Great. Ballard yeah. chatting about all the narratives that come out during draft season that we are forced to talk about. We do not love. We do not start any of these narratives. Never. No. These are just things that are out there happening. And I feel like we've done our best to kind of say, this is bullshit, this is not bullshit. Here's Chris Ballard, actual GM, fourth overall pick, who had had to have heard a thousand different stories about what was going to happen in the first three uh, picks before him. Here's him chatting about the whole draft cycle and process last night. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I kind of, I get frustrated. Now I'm going to go off on a sidebar here. All the, I almost said a bad word. <laughs> all the crap that the comes out about these kids. <laughs> it's crap. Like, it's bullshit. I'm sorry, but it's bull. Said a bad word. Like people yep. that leak Crazy these good. stories, these negative stories on kids. I just don't. I don't agree with it. It's bull. These guys work their ass off mm. to get where they need to be, and then all week you got to read and stories and ask all, and then they got to answer questions on it. So anyway, not on Anthony. It's on some other kids in the draft that are good kids, and I thought had to take a little bit of a beating that they shouldn't have had to take. Chris. And Chris Bauer talking about C.J. Stroud, we yeah. we think. Yes. Right. Also, Chris Bauer's hearing all these stories. He's like, no, 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 Texans take C.J. Stroud, please. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's not get crazy here. Let's, let's not get Anthony Richardson up to number two overall. Why are these people saying these things that are not true? Conti, let's put out that he's a good guy. <laughs> Come on. Conti, let's yeah. put this thing out. We need Anthony Richardson still available at four. We talked to Chris Ballard after the draft, after he made the pick, and he talked about pretty much like, hey, it's not about right now. It's about what he's going to become. Mm -hmm. They were drafting a ceiling there. They were not drafting yeah. the floor. And I love that Chris Ballard kind of went out of his way to do that and say that. Not a normal Colts move for Chris Ballard to kind of say that and do that. But as soon as we heard Anthony Richardson's name announced as Colts fans, we were fucking <laughs> pumped. Yeah, now, please. obviously... Nobody wanted Will Levis in the first round. Yeah, that was tough. We did not know that was the case, though, because everything we'd been hearing is that Will Levis would go number one mm -hmm. overall. Here's what Chris Ballard said to us immediately after picking Anthony Richardson at four overall to be the new face of the Indianapolis Colts. Has it been Anthony Richardson this whole time, and why was it Anthony Richardson, Chris? Yeah, we've been dialed in on him for a while. And, um, it, look, we're betting on, on what we think he can become. And... He's a he's a physical freak in terms of his ability to run and throw. He's a big, strong man. And then the more time we spent with him, you know, we just thought that you know what he is he is going to really grow because he's smart, he cares, and he wants to be good, and all those things. Look, is it going to be is it going to be pretty early? Probably not, but we'll work through it and let his talent come to life at some point. 
I love that. Mm-hmm. I love everything about him being honest because this is right after the pick. All the Colts fans were expecting a quarterback at four. Yep. All the draft boards were telling us it's going to be Will Levis. Yeah. I don't think everybody was as pumped for that. But I did see some Colts fans say, oh, great. We take a guy that couldn't win in college or whatever. Yep. It's like, you know what he did win? Uh, whenever he could compete against every other quarterback that's ever been in the combine, he beat him in everything. Yeah. The best. And maybe the team around him was shit. And if he was to come back, would he be able to be more successful? We would assume. But who knows what that team's going to be around him. Now we got the guy that worked with Jalen Hurts. We got Jonathan Taylor in the backfield. You got Jelani Woods, a six foot seven tight end. Beast. You got two weapons in Pittman and Pierce. Yep. I assume we're going to add to that. You're talking about an offense maybe being reinvigorated. And people talk about the offensive line last year being shit. We've talked about that a lot. Third different quarter quarterback in like two years Mm -hmm. they weren't able to get on the same page when you have a quarterback that has the opportunity or at least the threat to move you're going to freeze up two people in the box that helps the offensive line out I think immediately we make the team better but I do like the fact that Chris Ballard says hey this might be fucking ugly early okay we got to figure it out but we're throwing him in the deep end everybody's talking about he needs experience he needs experience he's 6'4 240 let's hope he doesn't get hurt and he can't get hurt But we're throwing them into games because we need it. That was really the only drawback from Colts fans. And I feel like that was taking place all across the draft last night. I didn't get a chance to keep up with everybody in their thoughts and every team to help us with that. One half of the hammer, Don Cowboys, Tone Diggs, who did a fantastic job alongside Gumpy last night from the hammer, Don Studio. What were uh, kind of fans talking about last night that maybe we might have missed while we're in here getting entertained by Red Panda and American's Great Escape Hero, Michael, uh, on the stage? Yeah, we were super positive, and thank you for that. Um, so we didn't see any of the negative stuff Hey, no stuff problem. You did great, Tone. Hey, hey, Tony. Tony. hey, Tony, you did amazing. Thank great you. job, Tony. Tony. And Killed I don't it. find the negative stuff. The negative stuff kind of finds me. Um, <laughs> well, so like, like the game. Us positive, right. super positive about Texans going two and three. Obviously, C.J. Stroud, Will Anderson. But a lot of people thought giving up 33, a first-round pick next year, and a third-round pick next year might have been a lot to move up to get Will Anderson. So that was kind of negative about the Texans there. We kind of talked about the Colts stuff there where maybe you don't want your number four overall pick saying it's not going to be pretty early because if you're number four overall, you kind of want it to be pretty early. Yeah, but I think Chris, the thing I like about it, and I just feel like I have to do this, I like that he's confident enough in himself. I agree. To just be like, yeah, this is what we did. Mm -hmm. You don't like it? Cool. First couple weeks is not great. Uh, Fire me. Whatever. Whatever. This is the guy that I think is going to be the best for our team and the best for our future. And that's what GMs have to do. But it sounds like not every fan believes every GM. Yeah, I I think we're like we're positive about it. And and if like they say what they say, potential gets you fired. But I mean, Mm -hmm. Anthony Richardson could be the best quarterback of all time. We're not. We don't. That we don't know that yet. Um, We don't know anything. Correct. Bijan at eight. Hey, is, is Will Anderson worth a first? Next year's first and third? We don't know yet. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe, Maybe we what have no JJ idea. What if Could uh, be. Bingo. Bijan at eight. Um, some guy that invented football said that was a bad decision because they were already a great running team uh, last year with some of the younger backs that they had last year in Cordell or Patterson. But – uh, what do, what is it they say? The enemy of great is good. Okay, if you're good, could you be better with Bijan? Yeah, probably. Okay. Yeah, it was interesting. I saw a little bit of the narrative about the Falcons reaching for Bijan because all the mocks had running back going later, maybe to 10 to the Eagles. Yeah. Eagles trade up and get Jalen Carter. Good for them. Mm-hmm. But Bijan Robinson going to the Atlanta Falcons feels like the perfect match. Yes. So you're telling me a team that is very prolific with running backs – decided to get the best running back in the game or in the draft, that feels like a smart move to me as opposed to people that are spinning it as, you don't need the best. You can just get three great ones. Like, imagine what Artie Smith can fucking do yep. with the guy who they're saying is Alvin we Kamara. We saw him do with Derrick yeah. Henry. Was that bad? Exactly. I just don't fully understand how the, the negative reaction is the immediate one because we have no idea what's going to happen. But also what your team was last year, you're trying to get better upon. If you can, even if it's something you're good at, like you found what you're good at, Let's go ahead and uh, exploit yeah. that even a little bit more. Got a young quarterback getting thrown in there. You got young talent around him, Drake London, Kyle Pitts, and now it's another guy who you expect to grow up with that uh, quarterback. But, I mean, this was, in my opinion, the best player in the draft, just overall prospect. Like, blue chip, that's been thrown around. This is a blue chip guy. And then off the uh, off the field, he seems like an amazing mm-hmm. high-character kid. Shout as well. out for so that, Yeah, that's, yeah. that's somebody you Connor, want hey. in your building uh, for sure. But, uh, I, I, I mean, you get a great player. You saw, you heard a lot of these same things when Christian McCaffrey was traded for by the San Francisco 49ers last year, and that worked out. Yeah, why do you need Christian? You already got enough yeah. running backs, and the system will create a running back. It's like, well, if the system's great and you get a great – not that those guys weren't, 
But you get a weapon in there oh, with bro. a good system, it's like... Kind of a successful marriage. Here though. we go. What are we even talking about? Yeah. I don't know why everybody automatically goes negative with everything. Joining us now is a man who's uber positive. That's right. Always. Yes. How could he not be? He's so damn handsome. He somehow, every single year that passes, looks a year younger. Mm -hmm. He's got those baby blue eyes. Mm -hmm. High school baseball stallion. That's right. He chose to play football at Ohio State. Now, he's the face of college football. Last night, he was on ABC doing the draft. Wow. Friend of the program, Centerville Oak, Kirk Herbstreit. Yeah. What's up, Herbie? How we doing, boys? How was your show last night? Hey, long one last night, Herbie. Long one last night. A lot of action, a lot of moves, a lot of picks. 31 picks instead of 32. Long night. Were you on the set the entire night last night? Yeah, entire night. And um, probably like you guys, those, those first uh, three picks kind of uh, sent shockwaves through the, uh, the, the 100,000 uh, fans. I mean, it's not very often you see a team make a pick and then make a trade and then they're back up on the board again. And I heard you guys talking about, you know, what they had to give up to be able to pull that off. And I, I think it initially because of the names that are involved with CJ and, and, uh, and Will, um, it's, it's star power, right? I mean, those are two of the biggest names on the board. And right away they're going to Houston. you got a new head coach, uh, D'Amico Ryans, who's coming over from San Fran. And it gets you kind of excited about – this ownership and this GM looks like they're they they they're trying to make some moves to try to become a player right now in the AFC South. So that kind of got things going. But um, everybody's talking about and you're so right. Who knows, right? I mean, it, it's it's time to celebrate these guys. But the one team that stood out to me a little bit, you know, on that first night was Detroit. Um, I, I think yeah. they pick up. Let's go. They pick up a back. It's. Uh, I, I don't know if people who follow the NFL realize what Jameer Gibbs is going to be for Detroit. And think about what Detroit did last year offensively. Um, and now you get that weapon. I mean, think of Alvin Kamara. Think of Christian McCaffrey. That's who he is. Like th This guy isn't a, a running back that can run routes. He can line up in the slot and run like a wide receiver. I mean, he is a matchup nightmare. And then he can get physical. He's a 200-pound back. He can run between the tackles. So that was a great pick. And then they turn around and get Jack Campbell. Hell, who yeah. I mean, about. That kid's a freak. 6'5", 240, and can run. And probably the most productive linebacker that we've seen over the last two years combined in college football. And they pick him up. So, man, I, I thought Detroit got off to a great start last night. Okay, so we appreciate that breakdown there, and we agree. And Foxy was super mm -hmm. pumped. Herbie, I needed that today because <laughs> my mentions were full of negative Lions fans that said we reached for both guys. Dude. And I don't know why we got a running back. So, Herbie, you know more than anyone – I needed that today. Herbie, why is everybody so <laughs> negative immediately? I, I mean, honestly, it feels like that's the case. And I think that's what our draft spectacular has become. I don't want to say it's become like a mockery of the draft. It's become a celebration of the draft yeah. more yes. so than anything. Every pick that's made, we're like, ah, could be. All you know, Because it's literally just a roll of the dice. All of these guys could be great. It seems like everybody just immediately assumes, oh, we could have got them in a second round, all these deal makers. It's like, <laughs> yo, you got a guy who could be 6'5", 240, that linebacker, it's like Dan Campbell's not going to fuck that one up, it feels like. No. That's just kind of mm -hmm. how they've been. That's a good sign. But he's supposed to go 50 to 60, allegedly, by the people that aren't GMs, Kirk. So that's the people we're supposed to take serious. Nobody knows shit about him. <laughs> <laughs> that's where we are. Nobody knows anything. And if somebody makes a pick that doesn't align with what they thought in their mock, then it's a terrible pick. Who – just, I'm with you guys. I, you know, I, I'm, I know how you guys are. Uh, you know, you celebrate these guys. I mean, it was cool to be uh, at the hotel. You know, there aren't a ton of hotels where, you know, where you're staying in Kansas City. So all the networks were at the same hotel, all the players, all of their families, everybody's there. There was such a, I don't know, just a tremendous buzz and excitement leading him to it. There's people that are anxious, they're nervous. And then you get picked and you're going to go, oh, that's, oh, that guy sucks. So oh, I can't believe he gets picked. No, I mean, you have no idea uh, how it's going to work out. Jack Campbell, I mean, if you're a Detroit fan and you're complaining, what do you, comp on what merit? Well, what do you complain <laughs> about? No idea what would ever make you complain unless you, you don't watch college football. Maybe if you don't watch college football, that's the one thing. Just let me air this out. I just, I watch these guys play from the time they're, 
they're 18 years old until they get ready for the draft. And I, I, to be candid, I don't do a lot of, you know, I'm looking at the tape, 536 hours of tape. I just watch, <laughs> like I watch the games for three years. And then I just talk off the top of my head about what I saw these guys do for, for three years. I, I don't need to break the film down and watch his initial short area space quickness. I, I just, can a guy play football? Can a guy fucking play the game? I, 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 <laughs> the guys that Detroit got can play. I can assure you that. No, they're not the only ones. There was 31 picks last night. Yep. I think offensive tackle was a good little run yep. there. Mm -hmm. Edge rush was a good little run there. Feels like that's kind of the game, right? Let's protect the quarterbacks. Quarterback C.J. Stroud, too. Anthony Richardson becomes the second or third quarterback going with Bryce Young being the lock over there. And Connor has a question about a little negativity from last night, maybe. Yeah, Kirk, last night was unbelievable, and obviously I recorded the show that you guys had, so I can't We're going to watch it back. Back to today, right. yeah. five hours. Be very, very round. excited. Whole thing, whole thing. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. I'm, I'm sure it was definitely the best show on TV. But one of the worst parts of last night was how tough it was watching Will Levis kind of go through that entire situation. Were you as surprised as we were that that was going to happen? And also, did you let ESPN know, like, hey, stop fucking showing this guy <laughs> on camera, give him a rest? Well, again, being on ABC, honestly, we, we would go to it here and there just because, you know, he was, he, like you said, he's a story. We didn't, like, do it you know, the way Aaron Rodgers or Brady Quinn, you know, dealt with it. It was like every every shot they could show, it was uh, going back to those drafts. I mean, we showed it. Um, I don't know. I, I guess I'm surprised. I thought he'd go somewhere in the first round. I don't study this stuff to know, like, you know, what teams need, who desperately needs a quarterback. I, I, there was talk about the Titans, you know, because of Tannehill, this stage of his career, they might make a move. Um, but w once Richardson went to four and Todd McShay does like, he does this 12 months out of the year. Yeah. And he, he was sitting next to me and he was like, man, it's going to be interesting to see what happens to Levis now. Cause he could, he could slide, but I don't even think Todd and these guys that really follow the draft thought he'd slide all the way out you know, of the first round. And I'm sure it's, he's going to end up at a place. that's going to give him a chance to compete and all this will be old news. But um, I, I, I was very confident because I know CJ and despite the way people tried to spin the, bad, stuff, bad, you know, the, 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 it wasn't S2 being bad. It was the coverage being bad. Um, I, I just have known the kids since he was a freshman. And so, He's one of the his his strength is actually his ability to process like that. That's a strength of his. So once you knew that he and Bryce were going to be gone, it was like, OK, who's going to be that next guy? You know, and, and the way the media and the way the speculation with these mocks, I mean, Will Levis, depending on who you talk to, is picking up momentum and minus and fifteen hundred to go top five. Nuts. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then and that's then, huge. And then, that's huge. It, it seemed like. Richardson was losing some momentum, you know, depending yeah. on who you talk to. And then Chris pulls the trigger at four and, and goes with the big fella. And you start to think about, wow, okay, Shane Steichen coming over from Philly with Jalen Hurts. You think about the weapons that they have around it. Basically, if you're an Indy fan, you, you want to go back and just study what Jalen Hurts and Philly was doing last year because that's going to be your offense uh, in 2023. And who better to do that? Than the best, most gifted physical athlete of any of the quarterbacks. I mean, it, this this guy. The yeah. one thing you can knock him on is lack of a. He would have honestly, in a perfect world, he would have benefited from another year of college football and just kind of growing and developing. But now he gets to do that as an NFL quarterback in the system that he's going to be in, and he he his decision making and his accuracy obviously has got to get better. But I think, and, and just the game has got to slow down for him. Darius knows that better than anybody. When he plays a quarterback like a Tom Brady, Tom Brady's just methodically, or Aaron Rodgers, they're just, they see what you're doing almost before you do it. And a young guy, like, like look at what uh, the Jets' young quarterback, I mean, the, the game is moving. It's like in fast forward for him. Yeah. Right? And, then and there's like his friends, his mom's friends too, right, right uh -huh. there as well. I mean, there's yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a lot of, oh, yeah. There's a lot going on there. But, with Anthony Richardson, because of the system he'll be running, it's it's kind of what uh, they were doing at Baltimore the last few years with Lamar. You run a system, it can kind of simplify the sub coverage because those safeties got to get down and they got to worry about QB run threat. And it kind of can simplify what they're doing on the back end and make things a little bit easier for him. So, 
So it's a roll of the dice by Chris. It's exciting. Um, I, I think that city's going to go crazy when they see him in a uniform and yes. they see what he's all about. The dude is is freaky oh, of yeah. a prospect as I've ever seen in 28 years. So yeah. I mean, it's 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 going to be exciting to see what he can do in that offense. He does that backflip just like so yeah. easy. Oh yeah, Wait. he runs one into the end zone. Oh, and does that backflip? <laughs> Indianapolis is going to go. Absurd. Yeah, right really cool. And with the last couple of years, Kirk, two years ago, we lose in Clowntown, don't make the playoffs. Last year was abysmal. Boring to watch. I don't think Colts fans, and this is a wild thing, we're picking number four, the roster's good. I don't think Colts fans are like, hey, this year needs to be, yeah. we need to go win, win, win. Mm -hmm. It's like right. if we, it's just like the Justin Fields in Chicago. We need to see like seven to eight games where Anthony Richardson's yeah. like, could be a guy. Good football. And if he could be a guy, then we're like, yes, we got a guy. But now, the thing about Steichen, had A.J. Brown, had little Batman with Devontae Smith. Mm -hmm. I mean, they got some real weapons over there. We got Pittman, Pierce, and a tight end. We're going to have to attack that here in the next couple that's rounds best, of free agency. the best O-line in, in football, too. The O-line's going to have to figure it out. Really? What? They got, they, no, they no, got that's what and, and hey, hey, guys, how about this? All of a sudden, the AFC South goes from being like a ugh to ooh with Trevor Lawrence hey, and Travis uh, again and, and what they did last year. The AFC South made. is just fine. Mm. <laughs> okay, seven out of eight. It's 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 gonna. There's gonna be some fun storylines uh, in in that uh, in that division for sure. I tell you what, and some Thursday night games are gonna be electrifying. Yeah. Uh, Tone Diggs has a question for you here. I know you got to go quick. Yeah, Herbie. Um, how do you feel about the Georgia Bulldogs defense basically being a feeder system for the Eagles now? <laughs> oh, oh man, smart. They should just they should give a class on how to draft. They they, they are such a different level the way, way they put their roster together. I mean, just when you look at their defensive line, like pull out their depth chart and look at Philly's defensive line. And with the first pick, I'm sure there's some other areas. I mean, they lost some safeties. You know, maybe they could go that route. And they just can – I just I, – doing the NFL last year, I've always been an NFL fan and covered it and watched it. But when you do the games, you kind of go to another level of, of being prepared. And the thing that just – every week – the line of scrimmage. We get so enamored with the quarterback and the receivers and the skill and the points – it's the line of scrimmage. Look at these great teams. And the smart teams just continue to add depth and get bigger and stronger and faster up front. And Philly's another example of that. I mean, they went and got the big guy last year. Jordan from, Davis. From, they thought that was a great pick. If, if if you think he was a great pick, wait till you see what's coming in this year. I mean, it, it, it's smart. It, it's the best defense in college football. And why not continue to bring in great players like that and, and bring great leaders in like that? Uh, but I, I think it's fantastic. Here's their squad, and obviously they're going to add to it, we assume, as they continue there. A lot of Georgia Bulldogs now in Philadelphia just made it to the Super Bowl. Lose offense coordinator, lose defensive coordinator. Mm -hmm. They're still re-upping. They got a lot of talent over there. What was it with the story this morning that hit the Internet that the Georgia coaches were not speaking highly of Jalen Carter or something like that? And why does that shit all get out there? I, that, that's that's one of those things. I, I know Kirby really, really well. Um, Kirby was ne would never speak bad about one of his players. Now, he might say, you know, he's got he's to be able to get in the right position, the right place, which, by the way, having all those Georgia guys around Jalen Carter. Helps. Jalen is the defensive version of Anthony Richardson as far as if you're just looking at who's the most talented player, you're just watching film and you're looking at players make plays. He's in the NFL. You guys use these terms game wrecker. I mean, it's obvious this guy, <laughs> as soon as you turn the film, you're an offensive coordinator. You're like, okay, we got to account for 88. Like that's the first thing you're looking at because of what he can do and the difference that he can make in a game. But that, that's just bullshit. That, that's just stuff that people are going to throw out there and, and try to take shots. Uh, we were with Kirby last night on the air, off the air, um, oh, no big you know, he had some moments hmm. during the season. I mean, you go back and look at the national championship. There are moments that, that he would be talking to Jalen Carter. Jalen Carter kind of looked at him like it was suggested talk, not, okay, sir, yes, sir, kind of talk. So I think people started to speculate a little bit about some stuff, but there's really nothing to that. I mean, Georgia, they got great players. They got players that play on the edge. And, uh, and, and a lot of times players that play on the edge and play defense are the best players uh, in the league. And so you, I, I think having the Kobe Dean and those other Georgia guys 
uh, definitely can help out uh, th this uh, this defense and help Jalen Carter out on a personal level. Well, you help us out on a personal level and on a show level. We appreciate you taking time here on this busy Friday overreaction to round one. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your weekend. You're the absolute man, pal. You guys are the best, man. I'll be watching you tonight. Have some fun. No, no. No, no, no. Oh, we're mm -hmm. not doing tonight. No. Are no, you no, doing Herbie. What's your problem, Herbie? Are you doing Herbie. Are you Go back to Kansas City. Get your ass on that stage. <laughs> are you doing it? I thought you guys just kept banging. Nah, <laughs> don't put that on nah, us, Herbie. Fun all right, show. All right, Herbie, please. Jeez, Louise. I, so you guys, are you just chilling tonight then too, like me? Not, not like you. No way. <laughs> not, not, not like, like you. you. I mean, we're not able to live like you, Herbie, Should but. Bro, bro, I didn't. I've never seen you pull. What, what's the hat? What do you, what's the hat going on here? Dude, I got like two hours of sleep last night, you know, hopped in the shower this morning. Didn't want to do the whole hair thing, but my head's so big, you know, I'm, like you've seen me take this thing off four times. It's not comfortable. <laughs> this thing is like digging into the side of my head right here. So it's tough. I'm trying to figure out how to do it. You're a big ball cap guy, though, because you play yeah. baseball. Oh, yeah. good. This is a good time. I mean, this is a draft Great reaction, time. but we need to talk about this. Pittsburgh Pirates are the best team in fucking baseball. Yep. Yeah. What? Cincinnati Reds, worst team in baseball. Oh. oh, my God. I might start wearing more hats. Maybe I'm a baseball guy now. Herbie, maybe you should take the cap off, pal. 18 and 8, second best record in baseball. Are you kidding Holy me, dude? Shit. 26 so games dude, in? We got 18 of them. Yeah. Hey, you're, I think you're 18 and 8. Yep. So in, enjoy, enjoy this little start <laughs> that you've had. The Reds, by the way, after looking typical April terrible, they got a sweep over the Texas Rangers. So they've won three in a row. Now they go out west against Oakland, and then they, I think they have the uh, the Padres. Oh, you guys are but, dead. Uh, so screwed. I, don't worry. I'm going to call you the day that the Reds pass the Pirates in, in the division. That ain't happening. I'm going to hop back on here with you. We just paid a guy 100 some million dollars. That yeah. ain't what the Pirates have ever done. We're playing baseball now. <laughs> I know. It's our but sport. But you have the – you have probably the best setting in, in Major League Baseball. Not probably. Ballpark. I mean, come on, yeah. PNC Park. And this is the BNP, pal, in PNC. The brand new Pirates in PNC. Oh, yeah. It's great I to be a baseball town. Could, but take it over to PNC for a weekend series. Hey, sounds good. We'll dress we'll like umps. That. We'll go right behind them. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. We'll do the full, hey! Yeah. You know what I mean? We'll do that whole thing. All right, we appreciate you. Have a great day. You're the man, ladies and gentlemen. Baby blue eye. Big brain happening. Kirk Herbstreit. Hey, Kirk. Herbie's the man, dude. Oh, he's yeah. the best. Glad he's in the NFL now. Yeah, happy he's in a men's league. Yeah, it's about time. I don't say I watch 56 hours of film. I watch these guys play three years straight, yeah. every single game pretty much. More Calling valuable. him. Yeah, I think so. And I'm just talking off the top of my head. Guy plays football good. Mm -hmm. He knows him. Is that what you're looking for? Is that what we're driving? <laughs> I don't know. You tell me. I'm oh. so happy he said that. Lions fans were so mad about the running back pick. That Ridiculous. wasn't the only – hey, they yeah. weren't the only fan base. Out. Two running backs go before any wide receivers, Yeah, which was yeah. going to be your question to yeah. Herbie and your question mm -hmm. to Herbie. That was a surprise. That felt like a big-time surprise of the night. Yeah. Um, Gibbs was for sure. Bijan, we we didn't know he could have went anywhere. But uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba was kind of mocked around that 12, Teens. 13, yeah. 14 yeah. area. And when he fell to, what, 20, I think, to the mm -hmm. Seahawks? Yep. yep. Yeah, that was that was definitely a surprise. Yeah, and then I, the run just started. I yes, mean, it, it was did. Jackson Smith and Jigba to to Quentin Johnson to the Chargers Zay. to Zay Flowers to the Ravens. Like it, it was ridiculous Addison out of nowhere. Yep. Yeah, Dalton, Addison, 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 Dalton Kincaid, Kincaid, only tight end, right? Yep, yep. yep. And he went over. Because didn't Tom say Michael Mayer? Somebody said that Michael Mayer just went. Yeah, something like that. Oh yeah, that it was, was, it was when uh, I, I think it was when Cincinnati was on the clock because a lot of people had been saying they were going to get him and then. Correct. Who they, they ended up getting Miles, Miles Murphy. Murphy. Yeah, yeah, they got a yeah. D end. Yeah. We'll take some phone calls on the Five Energy phone line. 1 833 432 3663. 1 833 4 Shout out to Herbie joining us. Yeah, yeah shout awesome. out. I think he's driving to meet the wife right now for lunch. Oh, that's nice. nice. Yeah, yeah. So Glad he's on the highway again. Dude, yeah, that, that was, was the worst. worst. That was a couple years ago. Do you remember this? Nah. You, did you ever see this happen? Nope. He pulled over on the side of a fucking highway Shh. to do the thing. He was FaceTiming. In the highway that he was at, had this big downhill bend coming right at it. So these trucks, we literally saw them in the background. <laughs> Small little truck coming around, and then big, big, big. And then his car would boom. Yeah, just barely shake. Pass. And he's like, this guy can really throw the ball well. It's like, Herbie, will you please get to a fucking <laughs> rest stop? Yeah. Will you please? We thought he was going to die. 
just in there. So I'm happy. Yeah, terrifying. still get PS, uh, PTSD from that. Yeah. Like, yeah. legit. That was I a scary him scene. I was like, oh, God, please get him in a residential neighborhood. Not this again. He did have a seatbelt on, which is good. He did? Yeah. Unlike Ohio people. What? To wear a seatbelt. I was interested by that. So I don't wear a seatbelt. Not saying other people should, shouldn't. You do whatever you need to do. I'm not a big seatbelt guy. Well, the other thing, you safety belt, man. Okay, so Come how about on. a friend of mine's uncle who died because oh, a fire God. started thing and melted, melted he couldn't the, get yeah. out. Yeah. He's actually trapped in his seat. That's my life. You all live your life. Well, you know what I mean? When you're driving decision. a car, I understand that those things have probably saved people's lives before. There's a lot of studies that have done that. I've seen it. All that stuff. Somebody I know lost somebody because that fucker melted and they couldn't get out. Now, is that exactly how it went? I don't know, but I was told the story. <laughs> That's how it was that told. Even if the person wanted out, that thing was melt melted together pretty much because the fire. Keep a little pocket knife for me. I was say I feel like it's my job here. Uh, I promoted the Life Straw a few times on this program. There we you go. You went out and got one. Uh, I have this nice little flashlight window breaker yep. knife thing that I keep That's in nice. my side door just in case you know I I go off the side of a bridge and, and land in the water. I boom. So I feel Fire. like I I wear this one, the yeah, one the around bottom. Place. But I ain't wearing this one. Okay. Okay. Mm. So this one's going behind. This one's on. I feel like I met everybody in a minute. No way. That, that is also a tough move, though, because you can get seriously injured on the inside of your body <laughs> with just wearing the bottom. I actually do know somebody who was in a bad wreck, only had the bottom part on, basically tore up every you know organ and stuff inside yeah, of Yeah, could saw you in half. Yeah. Okay, like so Chris this Andy. one's there, it ain't going to fucking just rupture yeah, my sternum. Extra instead support. Of, instead like of Chris going Angel. forward. I mean, you don't have to worry about it because if you if your truck were to hit a semi, I think the semi yeah. would get more fucked up. I agree. In the car that I have stops before it comes close to hitting right. anything, even if it's incredibly uncomfortable. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was backing into my fucking dry, or my garage oh. the other day, and a raindrop must have got on the sensor. That is the worst. <laughs> Bro, that thing stopped. <laughs> Boom, my head hits the thing. I'm like, oh my God, did I just kill somebody? And then I like look around. Oh no, I have fucking two feet over there. What are we doing? So are, annoying. I know I, how to park in my garage. I even gave a little like, hey, let's fucking yeah. tighten up. What I'm was the that? boss. Okay. okay. I, if I want you to go back. <laughs> yeah, you fucking go back. You go back. <laughs> I'm gonna start wearing a seatbelt though because this conversation. Yeah, there you go. Or, or just don't wear one because the just don't do the only bottom. What happens if it's the end of the world, okay? Okay. And you gotta plow through a barrier with your your car. Is it gonna is it gonna stop and not let you plow through a barrier? Hundred percent chance. Yeah. yeah. I think they actually are trying to make cars non barrier wrecking proof. Don't like I that. Right? There should be a button in every car that says emergency mode. I gotta get away from something. I gotta plow through. Just call it the Last of Us. Boom. Yeah. Boom. Just go to the Last of Us mode. Bang. Need to run over these humans yep. and that car yep. to get out of this particular area. Is that what exactly. the Cybertruck is, essentially? I think Elon probably will let you run people over. Well, the, I, 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 I allegedly I believe it's those built, cars do run people yeah, over. but built for it. So his, the Cybertruck, Elon Musk, if he had to build it, if we're just thinking about his brain, if people are driving towards you about to hit you, stop their car. Yes. Yep. If you're driving towards somebody else to hit them, Stop their car too, so you can hit them better. And force you to beat up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If we had to guess, don't like to judge things like that, but that feels like an Elon Musk move. Yeah, absolutely. Smart. And he would actually present that as our truck actually has the capability to run others over yeah. and not get run over. Mm -hmm. So just there's engage ever, the kill switch, and you are good to go. There's ever a fungus <laughs> that just takes over everybody's brain. Mm -hmm. just it's go possible. Ahead and get them. Have these things ever been on the road? No. This is what six years ago we saw this thing. Yeah. Is yeah. you still on that I list? I still get one? emails. Yeah. yeah, I thought they started actually I officially actually can't get it, though, and it says next year, but they said that last What'd year. What'd you put, 100 bucks down or something? Yeah, $100. So, so they got 100 it. bucks from 150,000 marks yep. to Whoa. put their name on a list <laughs> yeah. to potentially get one of these 10 years clean, from though. now. Yeah. What a great little collection. That's like when the Green Bay Packers say, we're offering up new stocks Bingo. for ownership, and they just collect $10 million. Exactly. Are you talking about part owner? No, I'm saying you're a Mark, but but you're not the only one. You're not the only. There's a lot of people that would have done. Part owner Mark. And I think I I was gonna sign up for it, and then whenever I read it, it was like, there's no timeline for you to actually get the Cybertruck. No. So it's gonna be tough for me to just give a hundred dollars to Elon, and not have anything in return for nothing. He asked me for eight bucks though <laughs> to use something I use every yeah, day. True. You fucking got, you got it. it. That's different. Well, so the first uh, first email I got was it wouldn't fit in garages, so they said they had to like bring the sizing down. Yeah, but the part of it that everybody liked was the size was yeah yeah. So Some things big. don't fit in garages. I just would like to say if you have a small garage, you probably shouldn't have been in one of the marks to put a hundred bucks. And then fucking COVID came. Probably say you be also if you put a hundred bucks down, you should have just looked at the thing and be like, oh, this thing looks like shit. I don't want this. 
Oh, you don't like it? No. That is one of the worst designs. That looks so stupid. I love that looks it. so fucking stupid. That thing in matte black. It's an no way, triangle. dude. I, I like that thing. Yeah. I think no it's sweet. way. You like that more than the Hummer you're driving? Are you kidding me? No. My car looks like a spaceship. That thing looks like something I fucking made out of clay in like fourth grade. I would like to say. <laughs> the headlights probably all anybody, the way across. Yeah. Anybody driving that Clean. clay mold? Okay. Yeah. That does look like it's kind of just. Yeah. Bam, just, bam, exactly. Bam, like I drew that exact sure. same thing as a car with stick people sitting in it when I was in second grade. And I was just thinking it was like a Cadillac truck then. So now I know not to drive it to the office. No, definitely drive, no, have drive to. to the office. Zeta, let me tell you why. Because people that drive that truck and people that drive my truck, we thought we were saving the world. Yeah. Exactly. Remember, we thought we were good people. Turns out the power of that clay mold. Structure, oh yeah. boy, boy, yeah, killing like two hundred people. Whoa! Every single time you charge it, yeah, those that's mines. not your fault. You seen the working conditions in those mines? I have not, but I've read the headlines. Yeah, yeah great. Do not I, look. I would like to continue the grandstand on the fact that I'm saving the world with my electric vehicle. Mm -hmm. Plugged it in the other night, though. Didn't charge at all. What? At all? That's an issue. I just assumed it was dead. Mm -hmm. Plugged it in last night. Started working. Okay. Only had an hour and a half charge though, so I don't know how long we got in on that thing. Oh. But it's back. It's back better than ever. Probably because the kid who's pedaling a bike to charge your car oh, died God. two days ago, and then they finally <laughs> replaced him. So you're saying that like night. that Flintstones human movie where they got that little dinosaur that is the garbage disposal? <laughs> yep. yep. You're saying that's happening on the other side of my wall in my house when I plug that thing in? <laughs> I got a kid over there on a Peloton just... <laughs> It's not even on the other side of your house, actually. The plug-in power to kind of link with the car. Oh, it's a Bluetooth. Yeah, it's being run, I don't know, probably somewhere in the worst part of China right now as we speak. <laughs> what is that about? That, hey, that's not me. That's just, it's that's draft just, spectacular reaction. You and I'm pumped geez. about it. You know how pumped I am for this second round? There's still so many good dudes oh, on the board. Hey, the Patriots got a big-time corner there, Christian Gonzalez. You, oh, yeah. you thought there was a chance he would go much earlier. The Patriots make a play. It seems like a smart Bill Belichick move. Yeah, great Bill Belichick move. He's versatile, can play all over the uh, the back end, can match up with different body types. Um, Devin Witherspoon, he was a lot of buzz about him going into the draft. He was clearly a cut above the other guys, yeah. according to the scouts, going at five to uh, Seattle, which was a surprise. And then Washington going and grabbing uh, Emmanuel Forbes uh, right before Christian Gonzalez. Hell yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, after. Chris no, 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 he was, he was before. Oh, yeah, right before right Christian before. Gonzalez. So um, that was kind of a surprise, too, with his, you know, his question marks about his weight. But he's, he's an absolute dog. Hell that. yeah. So Deontay Banks, Christian Gonzalez, Emmanuel Forbes, and Witherspoon. Four corners go in the first round. Am I reading that yep. right? Yep. That's good or bad? That good number? About what you expected. I expected. It was three guys that I expect to go. Um, and then Forbes. Cam Smith, um, Joey Porter Jr. Joey Porter Jr. could have all been Branch. first rounders as well. So I expect him to come off probably in a second. Yeah, Branch is the nickel safety type of guy. Pittsburgh Steelers are sitting on a 30 second pick here, right? Yeah. Pittsburgh Steelers have gotten a lot of phone calls. Yeah. They take an offensive tackle, massive human being. Yes. I watched his draft Robert party. Jones, yeah. He's got a lot of people in his family. I saw that. He's yep. going to have to figure out where all that money's going to go. About the same thing. But he needs to potentially cut. <laughs> Six eighths. So what does that mean? Make sense. Are those people out of the room? I do like that everybody around him, though, is happy for him. Seems like a great guy. Everybody loves him. Steelers are trading this 30 second pick, though, allegedly, is what's going to happen. Yeah, first, that was awesome because we assumed, Connor and I, that Belichick probably called Tomlin, hey, you guys are looking for a tackle or a corner. What do you guys want? Tomlin said tackle. He said, all right, the Jets want to tackle too. Let's fuck over the Jets in the AFC East. Hell How's yeah. that sound? All right, we'll do that. Uh, and then here at 32, because I mean, a lot of Steelers fans would have been happy with potentially Joey Porter Jr. or mm -hmm. Brian Branch or or a center that's going tonight. But I think there's so many of those guys that you can still get here in the second. It depends on how far they would have to trade back from that 32nd if there's a team there that does want to go up and maybe get Levis and Hooker. But I, I've heard or I believe people are reporting that the asking price, the Steelers aren't just giving up that pick. Like they are. They're asking for a decent amount of picks. Yeah. Still a first rounder. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. a first. That's a first rounder because the Miami Dolphins cheated. Yes. Right. Let's go to the phones. Five energy phone line. Let's hear what some people are thinking about the thoughts. Let's go to Jay in Florida. Jay, what's going on, pal? I have a little bit of a uh, conspiracy theory here going on, I think. Love yeah. it. So Love those. Anthony Richardson has a better RAS score as a wide receiver than Chase Claypool. He's a perfect 10.0. And then last night, he's on the NFL Network for their draft interview pre-draft, uh, pre and he's got a little brother with him. And his little brother is an exact clone of him. Something's going on here. Thank you, Jay. Holy shit, hey. that guy's on to something. 
What I don't think I got it. I didn't either. What Am I too what tired? What did Chase Claypool have to do with Anthony Richardson? Well, he body? said his score. His his RAS score, which is what? Relative athletic yeah. score. That's like the uh, big new thing now. It's a 10. For yeah. receiver. Is that for out of at, 10? At receive, I believe so, yes. So he would be the best receiver physically in this particular oh, draft. Like class. he compares to yeah. Chase Claypool. Yeah, because his body. Oh, he jumps yeah. higher than Chase. I think he runs faster than Chase. He's yeah. bigger than Chase. So what's the conspiracy with his little brother that he's athletic too? He said he looks exactly like him. He yeah. does, yeah. but his little brother was also like five seven. Bingo. So at, at best five seven. That got me in trouble with my brother. He's four years older than me. I used his uh, ID a lot. But on there, it said five foot eight. Mm -hmm. well, and that, that became a problem down in Panama Beach, Florida. Yeah. I actually got surrounded by police officers and I stared him right in the eyes and I said, I hit a gross bird, sue me. And then I told him my social security number, which was his number. Then I told him my parents' names, their job, their everything. And I made the guy that put the X's on my hand said I was too young, give me that ID back and wash this off. And then I walked right in there and got hammered drunk. Hell yeah. As what? A 19 year old. <laughs> <laughs> but oh. that whole that whole age <laughs> thing or that size thing is a vast difference in siblings, which doesn't make sense to me, really. How does that work? Same people come together, create something. Mm -hmm. Vastly different sizes. Anthony Richardson's brother's five foot seven. This dude's six foot four, physical freak. I love him even more now. I thought maybe we are going to get another one. If Anthony Richardson's brother is going to come to the Colts in like a year or two, I was excited with what Jay was saying. That is not what Jay was saying. No, but I no think his brother is also like 13. So, yeah. you know, he, he's that's probably got a ways to go. You oh, know, so he he's going to be a Colt. I, I mean, I, they do look very, very similar. It sounds very like he's similar. 40. He's, he's he been does. country boy here, Anthony Richardson. Gainesville, Florida, kind of country out there. Young, too. I didn't know he's only 20. Oh, so he stayed home. Years old. Oh. Yeah, stay home. Um, I mean, I'm excited about the kid. Even he's obviously got some things to figure out, but when you're an athlete like that, it, it makes things a lot easier. To Hell yeah. uh, we have an update from Whoa. the internet. Ant Whoa. Antonio Brown <laughs> just tweeted that he's excited to return to the NFL this year. Hashtag Ravens flock. Hell hey, yeah. baby, AB. Congrats, yeah. AB. Lamar Jackson gets another weapon. Obviously, Antonio Brown still has a 10 pack. I believe he's the owner of an Arena League team as well. Yep. The conversation of him joining Lamar Jackson has been one that's been cooking up for two to three years. Now Antonio Brown of Donda Sports is reporting via a tweet that he's back in the AFC North with the Baltimore Ravens. Let's go, baby. They got Zay Flowers. What? They got OBJ. What? And now Antonio Brown says they got me too. So I'm excited to see what is real and what isn't. Do the Ravens know this. I wonder if Harbaugh's going to have <laughs> to come question. out and talk about this. Good question. I would assume that's the case. And if we remember when Antonio Brown was rapping a few weeks back at a festival, he said, you got football out there, throw that shit. One guy threw a bad ball. Yep. Then somebody threw a great ball. He snags it one hand, spins it on the ground, beat drop. We're right back into a song. Yep. Sweet. I think when it comes to football, Sure. Antonio Brown can still play it. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Top tier. Just whether or not you want to sign up for everything else that potentially comes with Antonio Brown. He's tweeting saying Harbaugh said, we want more. <laughs> we want more. <laughs> I don't know. Why would he? That's awesome. It Antonio is awesome. Brown would do that. Yeah. As Get him back. I mean, yeah. He just woke up and said, you know what? Fuck it. Brave as fuck. I'm playing this shit. Let's I want to play let's with start the some shit. Yeah. This is what you call public leverage. What if he started saying that? <laughs> yeah, I just told everybody I'm on the team. You guys got to sign me now. Yeah, Kanye taught what me this. Don't what a be play. sad, Ravens fans. I'm not retired yet. That was a cameo mm -hmm. from Cheech's car. Yep. Whenever he left the Jets game, I uh, did not know what his profession was going to be. He started doing cameos. Yeah. Somebody from Pittsburgh said they were sad that Ben Roethlisberger was retiring, yep. and he cut a promo about Ben Roethlisberger not saying his name properly at all, no. but saying he's still got a lot left. Mm -hmm. And that really kind of put Pittsburgh Steelers fans at ease. Yeah, we did. Yeah. I, I was like, I wasn't really sleeping a lot at that time because I was kind of sad. But then I watched that AB video a couple times before bed, and I slept fucking great that night. Let's go to Jeremiah in Utah. Obviously, we believe Antonio Brown is stirring the pot. A little bit. We appreciate the fact that Antonio Brown woke up today and said, fuck it. Yep. But... If the Baltimore Ravens are bringing in this many weapons and Antonio Brown says, I'll help you guys spin the narrative that you're bringing in weapons, mm -hmm. Lamar Jackson's got to be pumped on this brand new. Five-year, $255 million deal. Damn. $185 million guaranteed. Negotiated himself 
with his mom. Love Congrats it. to Lamar getting Thank that you deal done. boy, Lamar. We didn't get to chat about it yesterday as much as we should. There was a lot of question marks on whether or not this deal would get done. What would it take to sign Lamar? Lamar wants a fully guaranteed deal. Lamar wants this. He's hard to talk to. Has he been reaching out to other teams to build leverage? All he did was remain quiet. He built something called the entire gym. He started selling it. Yep. He has another soul food restaurant, I do believe, down in the South Florida area that absolutely crushed it for numerous events. He's handling his business. We wondered if he was going to get hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. Now we know he's getting $185 million guaranteed, the second most guaranteed contract in the history yep. of the NFL and the biggest contract overall in the history of the NFL. He negotiated it alongside of his mom. Hell yeah, Lamar. Way to go, Hell Lamar. Yeah. Way to get that Great thing news. done. I feel like I did say every time we talked about him getting an agent. There was still time for him mm -hmm. to negotiate a deal. Yeah. If he ends up getting, I think I said 140 or $150 million guaranteed, he negotiated himself, he deserves some business respect. $185 million guaranteed. Jalen Hurts' deal certainly had to have helped in the situation. Oh, yeah. But we're pumped for the Ravens getting that done. And I'm very thankful that Lamar Jackson is getting a chance to become wealthy off of all the shit that he's earned on the football field. Yeah, key word right there, earned. You know, he earned it. And uh, this is kind of, this is the NFL. You go out there, you play ball. Once you're up, you get paid. And you reset the market if you've accomplished the things that he has. Um, obviously, Watson's deal is going to continue to be an outlier. But uh, Hurts deal got done. Sure, it sped this up. And he gets what, 52 a year, 185 guaranteed. Yeah, on average. Love that for him, man. And now you can actually continue to, to build that, that Ravens culture back and hopefully, you know, they get back to a Super Bowl like he promised on draft night. I saw somebody tweet, uh, because he saved a 3%, which is what NFL agents take. Now, I would say if they're working with Lamar Jackson, they probably bump that down to 1.5% because you know how much money you're going to potentially make off the field with Lamar. So we're not just guaranteed to sign a 3%. Saved himself, like, Seven to ten million dollars. Yeah, like, not absurd. Bad. Hell yeah, That's dude. A good amount of money. And, and people would think you wouldn't be able to get as much on the back end because you don't have an agent. So you're saving the money, but you're saving money that you didn't earn or whatever. Not earned it, and then also saved it. Hell yeah, I'm happy for him. I'm pumped that they got this deal done before the season so we don't have to go through another season of questioning whether or not this Baltimore Ravens team wants Lamar around for the long term, whether or not Lamar is having to think for his future or think for right now yeah. with every single decision he makes on a football field. Yeah. He's going to get back to that. He's got Odell Beckham Jr. as a weapon. He's still got his tight end, and hopefully they'll remain somewhat healthy in the back end and running back position. The Ravens immediately back in conversation and in good graces with seemingly every player in the NFL because of what they did for Lamar here. They do the right thing. This is great. I'm so fucking happy for all parties over there. Yeah, unreal for Baltimore. And they ended up creating more cap space with Lamar. So after, you know, talking about the whole D-hop thing yesterday and him not getting any movement, maybe the Ravens now make another move and go get him another weapon. I hope the system changed. Obviously, Greg Roman has moved on and they, you know, won a bunch of games What? Yeah. I don't think you're going to win a Super Bowl unless you're kind of a pass first team. I think Lamar has the ability to pass on the ball. You bring in Todd, Todd Monken, I think, from Georgia as a new OC. You got Zay Flowers now in the first round, who some people had as wide receiver one in this draft. Yeah. You got OBJ on the one-year deal. Andrews, likely. And like you said, keep those backs healthy. Bateman. They got a potential. Bateman, you know, now we yeah. can kind of see what he can do. Um, it got a potential to be to be a hell of an offense. So Munkin, when he was with the Browns, OBJ's first year there, before he went to Georgia to win a couple national championships mm -hmm. as offense coordinator there, uh, OBJ had over a thousand yards, his best season that he's had in a long time. Mm -hmm. So I assume Munkin was a massive part of hey, would like Odell Beckham Jr. here if we can get him. They pay him fifteen million dollars. They invest their first round pick in Zay. It feels like the Ravens are showing all yeah. of us, hey, we're gonna go in on throwing the rock a little bit more. We've heard you loud and clear now. Them trading Hollywood Brown away last year was almost an indicator like, okay, they're relying on this whole two tight end. They're going to run it ground and pound. And then whenever they don't pay Lamar at the beginning, well, he can't throw the ball. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, now they're paying him. He's got the weapons. They're seemingly going all in. Bad news for the AFC North. Oh, no. Bad, Bad news. news. Bad. And normally I would say no because the Steelers do play him so well. I believe he's one and two versus Steelers with four touchdowns and six interceptions. But not everyone plays him well. Um, like he has a lot of, lot of, lot of wins in this league. So, I mean, whether he plays well against the Steelers or not, he, they're going to win a fuck ton of games. And this is... The most I've been worried about the Ravens since he's been in the league because of what Monken's offense did in Georgia and, and everything that they create. 
then it's also probably the best weapons that he's had with OBJ, Zay Flowers, Bateman, Andrews. Uh, Gus Edwards is going to be back healthy. Gus, 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 Gus State running back. The Dobbins. wheels on Dobbins. the Gus Dobbins. go round and round. Round and round. Round and round. That's Gussy Bussy, bro. Yeah. So I don't think they're going to beat the Steelers at all, but they're going to beat a lot of other teams. So they're always going to be in there. Let's go to Jeremiah in Utah on the Five Energy phone line. One eight three three four three two three six six three. One eight three three four. Dunno. Shout out to Five Energy by be. Uh, f- shout out to Five Energy by the way for being the greatest energy shots ever. Yeah. Go or none. Carried Perfect for last night. Oh, carried yeah. you yesterday. Oh, carried yeah. me yesterday. Taste delightful. The aftertaste is now good mm-hmm. as opposed to what it was whenever the first iteration came out. Shout out to Five Hour Energy. Shout out to Jeremiah in Utah. What's going on, pal? Cat, what's up, Ooze? What's up, Ooze? <laughs> hey, man. How's the mana? Keep it mana. Much mana. Much mana. Anywho. Uh, hey, you Ooze, Jeremiah? You Ooze? Yes, sir. Hell yeah. A lot Thank of Ooze is in Utah, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, as a 49ers fan, the best part of the draft last night was Red Panda going absolutely ham. Uh-huh. And uh, the ma- the magician blew absolute cheeks. Whoa. And <laughs> lastly, Ooh. 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 come on. Much more. Come on, Wanted to thank this specific program for putting me on uh, hockey because I would have never gave that sport the time of day. But because of this specific program, Hell yeah. you know, last time I watched hockey was Charlie leading the Ducks. Yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, in Quack. The national yep. championship. Quack. 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 Hell yeah, Quack. Oos. Thanks for the call, Jeremiah. Thanks, Oos. A lot of Ooses in Utah. I believe the Mormons did a lot of missions to the Hawaiian Islands and to the Pacific Islands mm-hmm. as a whole and did that. So I think that has become a little bit of a contingency up there. With that being said, Jeremiah, shout out to you for calling in and shout out to Red Panda. Shout, shout out Red Panda. Crushed. Man. I felt real good about that when the old brain was like, let's, <laughs> let's get, get Red let's Panda. That's who we need. That's who I was hyping up the entire time. Like, we got surprises in here yeah. that people are never going to expect. Mm-hmm. And I started thinking to myself, like, is this just for me? <laughs> you know, because how much I like Red Panda? Mm-mm. And it kind of was. Oh. Kind of was just for me. The only reason why I was doing it is because how I'm impressed I am with that. The athleticism, the focus, yep. the danger. Yeah. I mean, there was a time where I thought she was going off of that unicycle. She's up there. She's sitting 16 feet in the sky. Yeah. I mean, she is way up there. But to time it up and to kick fucking balls onto her head is bananas. Is that the first time you've seen her live? No, I actually seen her at a basketball, like a NBA game, I believe, at halftime. She's the but, um, halftime yeah. spectacle. Yeah. To be like that, like, because I was up top, so yeah. I was looking. Da- There's a photo Bailey got <laughs> yeah. of Red Panda doing her thing, and, like, she's kind of blurry, and then the focus is on D-Butt. D-Butt's leaning over the rail. The fuck is this lady about Man. to do right here? And she did four. Mm-hmm. She had Five. one, two, Five. three, Five. four. Missed the first five because one bowl yeah. Yeah, fucked that was up. A little yeah. filter. It was the bowl fault. And then she bounced back and hit the five the next time. It was like, damn, we're giving away 50 grand because of it. She was the perfect middle of the draft. We need something like that every time. Not that anybody's like Red Panda. No. We need something like that every year. Maybe Red Panda. Every I was going to yeah. say, that was one of the most impressive things I've ever seen in my entire life. Have you ever seen her before? I've never seen Red Panda in person. Uh-huh. Okay, never. so that's what I'm saying. I'm thinking a lot of people had not, not just not seen her in person. It seemed like the internet, a good... Not a good, a pretty solid yeah. amount of people on the internet were learning of Red Panda for the first time. Yeah. Bingo. On our thing. You, when I was saying, like, hey, she's been doing this for a long time in front of thousands mm-hmm. and thousands of fans, that's real. She's been on tour for like 35 years, just doing that at halftime. Dog. And every time she comes out there, same reaction. There was yeah. a time for 20 years it felt like she never missed. No. We're talking one, two, mm-hmm. three, four, five off the unicycle. First Thank time I you. saw him in. Yeah. That was the first time. I've seen it a couple of times. You usually don't see it on TV, obviously, because they go away to yeah. whatever halftime. So but if you're actually at a game, you'll see her. But, I mean, from the moment she climbed up the ladder to get on the unicycle to the moment she 
fell down at the end. Must walk. Which I wasn't mm -hmm. sure if that was planned or yeah, not. Mm -hmm. But um, it was like I was locked in every second. It was crazy. She's coming down from 10 feet at the age yeah, of 52, yeah. landed on heels. Yeah. At this wow. Absurd. That's not a discount. Magician, magical Michael Bolton, who is the American. <laughs> that was not his name. You were saying a lot of terrible things about yeah. blonde. Did you call him Blonde Jovi? No, Blonde Jovi. Oh, Blonde Jovi. Because I did think Blonde Jovi, not a bad name for somebody. <laughs> yeah, that's sweet, though, too. Yeah. But, I mean, he, what was he, American Magic Hero? American <laughs> Escape Hero. You're, you're a pig. He is, he is a hero, though. Oh, shit. Matt I mean, Mel that's loved him. Who? Matt Mel loved him. Mad Mel was just... Mad Mel could not take him serious. And I don't know if you remember anything to say because you're all hopped up on prednisone and all that mm -hmm. other stuff. You did not give the American Escape Hero a shot. I want to let you know that. You did not even give the guy a chance. Mad Mel had zero time for the fuckery that the American Escape Hero wanted to put us through. And I appreciate you chiming in. But how to get out of that rope? Well, it was clearly gimmicks. That's how he got out of the room. Well, that was we your know. first reaction. Exactly. No way. Matt exactly. Bell respects the draft. He's a hero. Just like when Rich well, Eisen didn't like Blue Man Group coming up on the stage, disrespecting Well, it wasn't draft. that. It was that, <laughs> you know, he, he had a couple of the jokes, and it's like, I get it. You got to kind of get the people to buy in. But then I thought, like, okay, we got to make sure this guy doesn't get too comfortable up here. Because he said 20 minutes at the beginning. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I said, and whoa, I, whoa, and, whoa, 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 whoa. No, no, you don't. You do not have 20. And we were at the point where it was kind of getting like, uh, okay, who's going to go here? Like, we really didn't. Levis is still sitting there. You know, everyone's talking about Michael Mayer. And then we, I had also, like, all I was thinking was like, God damn it, I filmed that Michael Mayer thing, okay? And if he doesn't go in the first round, like, that's just good. It's not going to be good. So I was kind of like, hey, let's get this fucking guy out of here. And then. It just so happened that the table was right behind him, and AQ and Pac-Man were standing there, and I, I just started thinking, take, and I was like, man, it would be awesome if both these guys just grabbed him. Double throat, choke slam. Double choke slam through that table. That'd be a great way for the American escape hero to kind of Could you, know, you imagine that get him in the, for the choke slam, though, and he wiggles out of it? That'd yeah. be even better. Choke but, slams both of them. Oh. He wanted to do the needles first, I think. That was Pretty cool. That was pretty I almost impressive. Threw up. I don't know how he did that. That one was weird. Connor, you're up in that guy's mouth. Yeah. What did you see? Uh, I saw a lot of plaque, a lot of bad, bad <laughs> teeth. <laughs> Let's uh, get through a but, break. But, Obviously, you can't say anything serious ever. No, I mean, that's honestly. what I saw. I am glad that I was back there <laughs> yeah. and not like where you were sitting, seeing him pull those things out, though. I, I was direct eyes on mouth. Yeah. The not thing, AQ's behemoth body was blocking. Mm -hmm. I thought he was going to pull and fall, though. So I was worried about. You know, like, front, yeah. we got a yeah. little stone cold. Yeah, right. Right. Like, we, don't, we, we don't need any of that. So my big thing was like, let's not have this big animal yeah. fall whenever whatever happens about to happen. And then Pac-Man and AQ, they were dumbfounded when that guy got out. Yeah. Pac-Man was like, that guy's hands were very red. Like, that was very tight on him. AQ said, like, I tied the knot, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> you had your safe finger. And that guy was out of it before we even seen it. He was. It was a flash. A lot of people had not so nice things to say about Michael, the American what? escape hero, but what? by far the worst and most despicable was AJ Hawk. He was <laughs> disgusting the way he was talking about that. That is true. American escape hero. I would like to thank him for coming here. Yeah. And for his it wasn't a self that's not a self given nickname, okay? The the community of magicians gave him that that nickname. That's not a self given right. nickname. Okay, that was I, I I believe the greatest of the greats gave him that name. Houdini, I think, actually gave him that nickname. Yeah, he's got a purple heart from magicians, so I don't know why All we're right. just running. Let's get to a here. break. Thank you to the magician. Thank you, Thank Michael. You. Thank shout you, out Red Panda. Hero. Shout out to the Ooses in Utah. Yep. And shout out to hockey, huh? Got a new fan. Look at us uh, spreading yeah, the word. Yeah, yeah. How huh, about hockey? Big game tonight. Huge. Hey, you know who the first team to uh, move on to the next round is? Who's that? The Las Vegas Golden Knights. That's our team. Wow. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Let's get to a break. AJ Hawk will be on the other side. We also have Jason Wright, president of the Washington Commanders, joining us in about 10 minutes. Be a friend. Tell the friend something nice. Take five. 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 Hello, beautiful people. During the Draft Spectacular, we announced a $50,000 giveaway. All you had to use was hashtag PMS Draft Spectacular and guess the combined weight of me, AQ, Pac-Man, and D-Butt. Now we are gonna take all the weights, add them up to the decimal. If it's over half a pound, we'll, we'll round it up. Only whole numbers are needed. Let's get to it. Pac-Man, good luck out there. Smelly. 185.8. Damn. Damn, Pac. Huh? Huh? 185.8? Uh, 
Is that big or small? What do you think that is? Scale not that accurate. Go! <laughs> Those focus are 50,000 cells. I agree. <laughs> Count them though. Plus 310. My playing weight. Point two. Look at this big guy. Ah! Wow. 300. Bro. Jeez Louise. We're currently at 496 pounds. Oh! 184! Scrapping lad. Congratulations! We did see him on a different scale. Say he's 160 pounds. So this is a big come up for Darren. Okay. Alright, we're currently at 680 pounds. Okay? Who wants some? <laughs> Who fucking wants some? 262.4 dog 942.4 will round down 942 pounds is the amount that us four weigh so whoever got that first will win fifty thousand dollars who also used the hashtag pms draft spectacular connor thinks he got it live on the show i did 942 pounds is exactly what i guess well you have to guess the weight of me aq Pac-Man and Darius combined. Okay. We will run a video of that. Remember, this scale is not accurate. You go so. 942. Smell. Ooh. Is that your official? Have you tweeted it? That is it? my official. I'm, I'm going to tweet it right now. You better hope that you tweeted it before somebody else. You can win $50,000. All right. It's been fun. Thank you all for participating. We hope you won. If you didn't, there's more money coming. Take care. Hell yeah, Red yes. Panda. It is yes. time to go on up to the unicycle yes. that has captivated people all over this planet Earth. Oh my yes. God. Ladies oh, and God. gentlemen, Red Panda is in the Thunderdome. Oh my God. Let's go. Hi, Red Panda. Thank I'm, you so much. I'm hyperventilating, Pat. I think I'm gonna have a fucking heart attack. Mad Mel, <laughs> could you tell me about the scouting report oh. on Red wow. Panda? Oh Absolutely explosive. You will never see someone with this kind of stability and balance in all your life. Been an absolute game changer for the last 30 plus years. Brings her A game every single time she comes on the court or multi-purpose field. And to oh, and look at her go. Completion to Red Panda. He's in the trenches. <laughs> He's got his eyes on the prize. The okay. ball is going on the head okay. of Red Panda. Two oh, balls completed from AQ Shipley. <laughs> this is nuts. Are you serious? This is AQ a can hold more than two points. Two balls. No way. I absolutely love oh. this song. Oh my god! Oh. There we go, Red Panda! Oh. One for one! Oh. Oh. Two. If Red Panda goes perfect on a day, we'll give away $50,000. Whoa! It's oh, one man. person who retweets this video and says something nice to somebody. <laughs> Red Panda the legend wow. performing during the first round at the Thunderdome. She's one for one on both tosses from her right foot to her head. Come on. Oh my god. No way. Two, no. Red Panda Two? stacking Slide. two bowls on top of each other, and oh, she did it! Oh, she did it! Red Panda, oh. she's batting and pitching a perfect game. There's no way this should be humanly possible. Nope. No. But what is impossible? It's I'm possible. Yes. Whoa. And whenever you're talking about Red Panda, you're talking about the biggest I'm in the history of I'm possible. Yes. What Hell she yeah. does every single night is not supposed to happen. Yes. Uh -uh. There's no way you're supposed to be able to accomplish this. No feat. way. No. AJ Hawk, what you say? How many people can do this? None. Just Red Panda. Five bowls. <laughs> Red Panda, take a bow. Hell yeah. Wow. That was awesome. Hey, it was. Please welcome from oh, West McAfee. Virginia University, oh, 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 2014 out. Colts Man of the Year and two-time Pro Bowler. We have a seven-second delay. He's Man of America, not Man of the Year. He's Man Hello, of America. Hello, Nashville. I'm not going to say a single word about the Tennessee Titans record against uh -oh. the Indianapolis oh, Colts boy. because I was a punter, and there's no reason for me to talk about that. <laughs> With that being said. We did not punt much against the Tennessee Titans, so you probably have no clue who I am to begin.
<laughs> two years ago, when I retired from the Colts, I retired alongside two greats, Robert Mathis and Joe Wright. A couple months later, I watched the draft. Robert Mathis announced the pick. Joe Wright announced the pick. And then an orangutan announced the fourth round draft pick. I was replaced by a zoo animal. I was not upset about it because the orangutan was terrible at his job. With that being said, the Indianapolis Colts are the hottest team, not only in the AFC South, but the entire NFL. A young nucleus surrounding oh. the Stanford nerd, Andrew Luck. Two old pros were drafted last year, 10 this year. And with the 89th pick of the 2019 NFL Draft, the Indianapolis Colts, Jim Irsay and Chris Ballard select future Hall of Famer, nice. linebacker from Stanford, Bobby O'Kariki. <laughs> O'Kariki. Pat McAfee, everybody. Nice job, Pat. I mean, that's 10 out of 10 right there. Fake Dungy loves it. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you choose college coaching? I was coaching on the backside of the desert for a long time. I started off with youth football. We have one of the biggest uh, programs in the country with ages five all the way to 14 and several teams of each age group. Name was Truth. Trust in God, respect myself and others. Understand I have unlimited possibilities. Try my best, never give up, and honor the truth in his creed at all times. Oh, that's that a good our, one. And we took the whole state of Texas and we went and played all around the country. That's what I was doing for a decade. Then I got into high school football. Then after high school, I'm just sitting there, all the kids about to go, you know, Shiloh. Bucky had graduated from SMU. Shiloh was at uh, South Carolina, and Shador was getting ready to go play for Coach Taggart. You know, I started getting a call, phone started ringing. You know, let me really consider that. So I interviewed on a couple of interviews and knocked him out of the park, but it wasn't the time. <laughs> and I accepted the, the Jackson State challenge, a tremendous challenge, a tremendous challenge, because I'd never been to Jackson. I'm like, HBCU, I don't really know a lot about it. Let me do my homework. And I accepted the challenge. Then Shador said, you know what, Daddy, I'm riding with you. And Shiloh like, Daddy, I'm riding with you. So now I got both the son's there and the mother's son doing all those social media and it just became a, a wonderful thing and being able to grab those guys you know when the Bible says you're riding that staff they come for me without the guys around you you're not going to be comforted so I learned to put some pretty good guys around me just like when I returned party if I didn't have 10 dogs in front of me blocking their butts off I wasn't going to be proud so I've learned to always keep some dogs around me to make sure I could go do what I'm blessed to do and that's the formula of coaching man just having some good coaches around you that, and we're not friends of the kids you know everybody talking about these kids are different the kids ain't no different their coaches have changed kids ain't no different they the same old kids coaches have changed quit pacifying these kids and they want discipline man they want structure they want to be told what to do and where to go and how to do it colorado was the biggest job biggest offer why no no no, no. colorado was the best job and the perfect job for me because of rick george because of the ad because of his spirit and, and, and what he spoke to me he touched me man i was offered more money of course but money don't move me connectivity and the spirit and, and being in the right place and doing the right thing, that's what moves me and motivates me. If money was it, shoot, I, I, I'd have lost this a long time. You don't come to work because of the money. You come to work because you love doing what you're doing and the money seems to follow you. That's been my formula. I've sat in all three seats. I've been the kid on the couch. I've been the parent right next to the kid on the couch. Now I'm on the other side and the coach that you're talking to. So it's not nothing that I don't understand about this process. You want it prime, you, that's what you're going to get. I don't know how to dress it up and flip it no other way. i got to be me. I got to be me un unapologetically. I'm going to be me. Hey, we have issues with that with some companies because of that. I assume you've run yeah. into that case as well. Yeah. <laughs> I'm right back out of the door. They should have Googled me, did your homework, and asked a few questions because I'm going to be me. Hey. Why? Let's go. This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, you never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God damn it! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? What the fuck? Oh! AJ, oh! Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Shut the fuck up! Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome. On this draft spectacular week, Feel Good Friday, April 28th, 2023, hour two of the program starts now. Feel good!
Friday is what we're experiencing here. Round one of the NFL draft was last night. We were live for five hours right here. And I was lucky to be alongside the toxic table at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt, fresh out of a double ear infection this week. That boy, Ty. Yeah. Guy had his flu game last night. J.J. Watt said that, not us. One half of the hammer. Dine. Dine. Cowboys turn Diggs is here. Host of everything DB and the Man of Man podcast. Darius J. Butler's live on the stage. We appreciate you, D-Butt. Great to see you. Did a great job last night. Another man that did fantastic last night had a three-piece suit on was sweating his absolute ass off. Oof. Former number five overall pick for the Green Bay Packers, where he would go on to become the all-time leading tackler for that organization. A lot of teams are hoping for the same type of outcome last night, weren't they? Yeah, right. they are. He's college football national champion, a Super Bowl champion. He's not a Ryder Cup champion, but he is the champion of Ohio. They actually gave him a trophy for being the biggest Ohioan in Ohio. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, A.J. Hall. Yay! Yay. Yay. A.J., what's up, pal? How's it going? Is Jason right on the line? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> A.J. Hawk does a fantastic of job course. joining us. I want to keep a GM waiting. Come on now. Well, he's not GM, so you just fucking Jesus. spit in his face. Ladies and gentlemen, the president of the Washington <laughs> Commanders, <laughs> former player. Yeah, yeah okay. you do. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Jason Wright. Yeah, Jason. Jay, what's that all about, dude? He just spit in your face, dude. Hey, call, call me what you want. You good. You oh. good, man. We good. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, anytime we see a former player have success like you have had, especially in the way that you have, you're not a coach, you're not a GM, you're on the business side. We are massive fans of yours. We appreciate you taking time to join us in the middle of this insane period of the NFL cycle. You want to talk right. draft or commanders first? Either one is fine. Nah, nah, come on. Which one? Draft. Draft is top of mind, man. I'm here at the facility about to go in the war room. Let's talk draft. Okay. How involved are you with the draft? You guys take uh, Emmanuel Forbes before Christian Gonzalez. Obviously, his size was something everybody talked about, 166 pounds. But everybody that has chatted about him says he's an absolute dog. dog. Is this continue to build the culture? Or what do you think made you guys pick him with your pick right before Christian Gonzalez? Every team has their unique way of looking at players, right? Um, and you got to trust your staff. You build a scouting staff. Trust your staff. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. We just saw the background there. What oh, hey now. Hey. 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 Yeah. What a That's setup. Awesome. What a setup. You guys are doing a new out. We'll get into that. Anyways, your scout team, go ahead. But yeah, you, tr you got you to trust them. You got to trust them. And when it comes to somebody like Emmanuel, um, our guys had a different view on him than some of the other DBs. They liked his big playability. If you said we were lacking one thing on an already strong defense, it was playmaking ability, turnover ability. He has that in spades. Um, and you got to trust some of the stuff that our team started to do. They started to leverage analytics a bit more. And that's not just about performance in college or predicted performance. It's on health and how their body can evolve and mental toughness and things like that. And so he was our guy. And like you said, he's a dog. And uh, you know, I played with a guy, Dominique Rogers Cromartie, when I was with uh, when I was with the Cardinals. That was D Butt's comp was last night for this guy yep. on the. That's it. DR DRC is it. DRC is it. He was incredibly explosive. He could go up and get the ball. He had a natural knack for tracking the ball. He was slight in the frame, but he would stick his head in there when he needed to. And I would argue Emmanuel was willing to do that much more than DRC was. <laughs> um, and so I, we feel really good about the pick. Hell yeah, as you should. Go ahead, AJ. So you drafted Emmanuel last night. Can you let people know, like, how long have you been on this guy? How long have you been studying him and watching him and knowing, like, hey, this guy might look good for us? Yeah, so I observed the team, right? Um, I observed the, our folks and our scouts do it, so I don't want to take any credit for it. But um, what, what I've seen them do is they've been, they've been on this for months at a time. Multiple people at their pro day. Multiple people watching the film on them going back months, back into our college scouting cycle. And in the room yesterday, it was actually pretty quiet and calm because he was one of our guys all along. We saw the things play out ahead of us. There wasn't a lot of wheeling and dealing. We didn't get, need to get names off the board and shuffle because he was one of the people that if he fell to that spot, we were gonna take him. Now we always look to trade back and get some value, but there weren't any willing partners. And so we took our guy right where we were. Well, we're all happy for you. We can't wait to see what you do with the rest of the draft. Now, yep. hey, now's the time. Yes, you sir. have been with the commanders. For the last couple of years, a lot yes. has happened. Yes. Yeah. Before you joined the Commanders, the reason why we all thought you were the perfect hire for them is because you were dealing with like PR nightmare crisis situations Companies. in the corporate world. That was literally what you were doing for your business after being an NFL player, and you were very prolific at it. So becoming the president of the Commanders, at the time, the Washington football team. That's right. And with all the exposés that were coming out, 
everything that was being said about what was taking place behind the uh, closed doors felt like you were the perfect person to go in there. Now, there was a high probability you were going to fuck it up. I mean, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, Very in that high. situation, there is so many outliers in things happening, yep. including the eyes of the government, yeah. every journalist, Why? and billions of dollars at stake. That's a lot of pressure. You have handled this in the exact same way the entire time. Feels like you're very calm, very confident, and trying to find solutions. You've told us that literally the entire time. Now we have a sale that has taken place. Josh Harris, I believe, is the new owner of the team, even though there was contradicting statements at the time, alongside Mitch Rails. Rails. And Magic Johnson's a part of that whole thing. How active were you in that whole thing? When did you know that was going to take place? Because that's a lot to juggle, especially with the eyes of the entire globe on top of you, Jason. Yeah, well, I think juggling things, uh, juggling multiple things has become our sort of core strength here over the last two and a half years because I I'd argue we've navigated 20 years worth of professional experiences <laughs> in the last two. Mm. Um, I mean, we had to rebuild a business from the ground up. Um, as much as we knew we were walking into a challenge, this ended up being much worse than we thought. It was a complete rebuild of the business from the ground up. You know, we've turned over 83% of the entire staff since we've been here two and a half years. That's not something I ever would have recommended as a consultant, but as you know, on the team, <laughs> Even though in that room there, if you don't have the right people with the right values, think think in the right ways that you want them to think that are all aligned along the same vision, things are gonna get effed up real quick. And so we had to have very low tolerance for anybody that was outside of our core values and our way of working. And so we had to turn stuff over and rebuild the business slowly but surely. I won't bore you with all the business jargon behind that, but no. I mean, we really had we had we had to rebuild this place. We had to have Real, real line of sight into how much money we were making. We didn't even really see that. We needed to build a people operations and HR department. We had to do everything from scratch. So, and then change a name and <laughs> pursue a new stadium and try to have a championship on the field. That's a lot of things to do at once, but we have got people here. Like you say, we got, we want, you want players that are dogs. We now have people on the business side that are dogs. Hell yeah. They're inspired to take on challenges. They're not scared of it. And so as you look at the sale of a team, which will be the largest transaction of a team of any sports team in history. Congrats. We have the type of people that are willing to take on that challenge, transition us into a new era where we've already seen the fans start to come back. The, mo the business momentum on the other side of this is going to be real because it, people weren't wanting to participate with us, whether on the sponsorship side or in suite sales or even season ticket sales because of the, the reputation of the organization. Um, part of that's losing for too long, and we're we're getting that right on the field. But part of that is how we perceive, and that's all going to change. And now we have the people here who are ready to absorb what is going to be a record year in business growth for us, and more importantly, allow us to have a home field advantage to to rebuild a home field advantage in our stands, to have support for the players that isn't clouded by anything else, and it's going to be very valuable for the business. Hey, great work! Hell yeah. Really good. I know you got a team around you. Whatever. If you end up going to another job, that is all going to be a part of your resume and what people are going to judge you for as being the president of an operation that went through everything that you went through in the way that you did and seemingly we're on the other side of it where brighter days yeah, are very much ahead. When did, because as we were dancing with the thought of will the team actually go up for sale or will it not go up for sale? I believe Bank of America was hired to kind of make a sale happen and we're like, here we go, the team's selling. Then it took a yeah. while and nothing was really on their front. We're like, oh, classic Snyder. Yep. He is not, he's going to end up not selling. This was just a PR thing to kind of stir the pot and then he's going to move on. When did it become a realization that the team was actually going to be for sale? And how long did it take to get a deal done? Because it feels like NFL teams are a commodity that every uber wealthy human would definitely want to be a part of. That's right. There's definitely no shortage of people that want a team, especially one in our market with this history, you know, many teams don't have one championship. We've got five world championships here. Right? No so there's deal. a leg. There's a leg. Right. No big deal. <laughs> there's a legacy here in Burgundy and gold. And, you know, people who examine the business saw the change in the business. We went from really a ebbing season ticket member base to number three in attendance growth the last year. We grew in sponsorship despite a negative headline every other week. We still grew 15 percent year over year. So they see all that and they're like, yeah, I want in on this. Um, but at, to the question of when did we know, I knew right at the beginning. Um, because I think a lot of the uh, rumor mill and intrigue Us. is out. Yeah, it's not, it's y'all. It's y'all. Um, and, and and that's and that's your job. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, it doesn't. Well, it does bother us, but it's not. It's, <laughs> Sorry. It's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. You're fine. 
it's not a big deal. But for those of us in the organization, especially those of us who were close to it, we knew right away this was a real thing that was going to uh, result in a transaction. Um, but, you know, there's many, many twists and turns uh, of who it could go to and the timing of it, but we're turning out to be right on time. Um, and, and I'm arm's length from the transaction. I don't want to overstate my role. You know, I meet with new bidders. I show them where the business is. I give the family office what they need in terms of data so they can get a deal done. But this is Dan and Tanya running this because it's their personal asset. And they've got to deal with it in the way they want. And we're almost to the end of it. Well, congrats to them. Uh, to that point about all the different stuff that you got to manage, this question from D-Bud I think is a great one. Yeah, and first of all, you look fantastic. Yeah. Clean look, yeah. that sports coat. Appreciate it. A couple Appreciate of buzz, little taco meat out. I'm feeling the look. <laughs> hey, I didn't know you got spider meat. Hey, spider yeah, meat. Exactly. I didn't know you got that jacket from. Uh, but uh, you talked about the pressure. Obviously, being the president of a team, largest sale in the NFL, um, obviously, it was a lot of pressure on you as a player as well. Have you found any parallels between being a player and now being the president of the commanders? And how, how did that help prepare you for it? 100%. 100%. Uh, and it helped me in my career before this. But I think there's a few things that you guys understand as players that have allowed us to be successful in one of the most challenging business environments I've been around in the last two years. The one is the ability to have hyper-focus. Mm -hmm. like when you are an NFL player, you have to be extremely focused on what you can control. How many times do we talk about, don't worry about what you can't control? Yep. Control what you can control, focus on that, do that with excellence and tune out the rest. And the ability to do that for me was honed in the NFL. It was honed in my first year and a half when I got cut nine times and was wondering where my next paycheck was going to come from. It came when you know I fumbled away a, a playoff clinching game and had to deal with the pressure of that and come back with my confidence the next game. Right. It, it comes from all that. And then I, as a leader, am able to translate that down to the team and give us a vision to cut through the bullshit and focus on what matters and allow the business to grow as it has the last couple of years. And Ron's very good at that, too, on the football side. So that's number one. The second is the attention to detail. And, you know, for me as a running back, if I, and AJ, you, you would pick up on this. If I lined up at seven yards instead of six yards, you'd be like, oh, they're running an inside zone. You know, they're, they're going to run in, they're going to run the ball. AJ, He's, we know that. I'm not going to be a pass right. play, right? If I'm, if I cheat my stance up and you might know that it's a pass play, I got to line up at that six yard distance, be disciplined, take the right steps, or I'm going to be out of line with the mesh. Attention to detail is what you need in crisis. You have to be attentive to the details. It is all about execution because in crisis mode, you just have to do the basic things well so that you can take on the messy stuff that can waylay the organization. And so ability to focus, attention to detail, and then building bonds with each other. One of the unique things about the NFL locker room oh, yeah. is it's the one place where all people of all stripes come together and build actual real meaningful relationships we fake it in the rest of society <laughs> we talk about each other we call each other names behind closed doors in the rest of society nfl locker room those friendships are, are, are those friendships are real yeah white black green yellow purple group gay straight poor rich country city everybody comes together and builds real bonds we have because we had to rebuild differently and because the challenge in front of us was so difficult we built a different kind of organization. We have the most diverse leadership team in the NFL. And that's not for performative purposes, because I've been tokenized. I don't do the box checking bullshit. Mm -hmm. It's because it actually allows us to get to better decisions. It creates camaraderie. It has us match our fans, and we are in a diverse area. And so we have built a team on the business side, and I would argue on the football side, too, that have family as a core value where we treat each other um, as though we actually have each other's backs, not just colleagues that we work with and that we would throw under the bus if something went wrong. Because if you have people like that, and we had some like that, and we had to get rid of them. Oh, yeah. I even hired some like that, and we had to get rid of them. Um, if you have people like that in crisis, you're going to blow up from the inside. And thank God we haven't had that, and we got the right people here. Hey, Jay, we're all we got. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. like that, exactly. that is like such a, uh, I assume for your world, but that's like a football mantra pretty much. When things go bad, it gets real loud outside the building. Even inside your building that aren't a part of the football operations, it gets loud about, well, it would be easier to sell sponsorship if this football team was good. It would be easier exactly. to sell tickets if this team was good. Your fans are saying, we invest in this team, this team stinks. And in the locker room, you're basically saying, hey, we are all we got right yeah. now. In a yeah, and real, and, real, and real talk, a lot of business sides will let that perpetuate. They will let that perpetuate. And 
there's a little bit of what happens in media entertainment. I think you guys are experiencing it too on, in different ways is there's a little bit of protect yourself culture that exists in oh. sports and music. <laughs> yeah, I'd it's say. like like you might not you might you, you're real quick to point out the flaws of somebody else and then just try to duck and hide and don't do anything bold or innovative or thoughtful yourself and be like oh yeah look at how they messed up go get them take them out I'm good and comfortable over here and one thing in our culture we do not tolerate that. I am much quicker to let go of the person who points the finger and puts blame on somebody else than the person who actually made the mistake. Hell yeah. If they made a mistake trying to do the right thing, trying to innovate and do well, I'm gonna rock with you. I'm gonna take the blame for it. I'll step in front and have your back as a leader of the organization. And then I want you to learn from it and go innovate again. But the person who says, hey, hey boss, did you see what they did over there? Shouldn't I have their job? You're gone. Yeah, the You're person that just wants to experience the success but is scared to hit, step into the batter's box, judging at somebody that just struck out on a curveball, mm -hmm. that's, that's a person you don't need because that person yeah. at least stepped into the box, you know? Yeah. Yeah, you know you, 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 that's it. You, I mean, we had to change the name of a 90-year-old of a franchise that most of our fans didn't want changed. We're going to go in a transition to new ownership after the biggest transaction in sports history. Hey, do you know who's we're, buying it? Are we close? Is that all? Is that thing? I mean, we're close. We're close. It, keep it, your name. Me, say, me saying anything right now is not helpful, and all I want is it for it to be done. So we're just going to keep it. No, give away leverage. Do you? <laughs> yeah, come on. Give away, give away leverage. AJ has a question for you there, though. Yeah, go ahead, AJ. You know, whoever the, the new owner might be, uh, if they plan or they even are allowed to try to change the name again, do you know if that's a possibility? And also, did you get to deal with uh, Magic Johnson at all? I know he's been deep into this and making pleas on national <laughs> television to try to get the yeah. Mr. Dan? I, you know, my only interaction with Magic was actually a great one. It was when I first took this job. And whenever people ask you who's the fam most famous person in your phone, I say Magic Johnson. Oh, um, oh, he, oh, he, oh. he called me when I first took the job and just encouraged me. And actually he gave me some advice. He probably doesn't even remember it. He gave me some advice that actually ended up being really true. He said, Jason, in this industry, you don't need to watch out for the obvious adversaries. The obvious challenges will always be there. In this industry, it's often the people close to you who will undermine you, pull the rug out from under you, especially when times get tough. And I absolutely saw that in different ways over these last two years. Um, and that advice rang true in my head, and I and I understand it a lot more now. He's a he's a really wise man. I haven't talked to him since, um, but um, you know, if he were part of the new ownership group, he would bring immense wisdom to us. That man's been through some stuff, and he knows what, and he knows, and he knows how to lead healthy organization. And the team name, go on. Has that happened? Oh yeah, that's, oh yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, I was trying to ignore your question. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah I know. That's, very, I, that's my with job. A very, yeah, with a very inspirational answer. Come on, man. Don't it was a hey, great answer. Uh, that's unbelievable. Great yeah. answer. Magic remembers that. Magic oh, yeah, remembers. I'll say that, like, that there are. Um, I think there are lots of constraints on changing it that the league has, and that's really mostly a league decision because. They decide how often teams can change uniforms and names and all that. It's very, very structured. I didn't know that. Um, I don't think a lot of us yeah, do that. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Like the uniforms and the, the all that stuff had to be approved by the league. It goes through a league process. Um, uh, but what I would say is this. Uh, the core of what we need to do is win a championship. And in order to do that, we need to have a profitable, biz profitable business that can invest in the football side, improve our facilities, Go and get a new venue deal done so that we can have a state-of-the-art venue and an entertainment experience for our fans that creates a home field advantage. Um, we've got to absorb the growth in the business and have our season ticket members come rushing back in droves over the next couple years with this shift. That's where our time and attention is best spent. You know, if I'm advising folks, I wouldn't, I wouldn't spend time on the name first. I would let a whole bunch of other things fall into place, peek our heads up in a few years when we're a healthy, high-functioning championship organization and say, all right, do we still want to discuss it? Hey, Blue Magic. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know? That's a brand name. That's a brand name. It's unbelievable. Don't need you cutting it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. You know we're talking about that. And that's why you're the coolest president <laughs> yeah. in the NFL. Boston Connor has a question for you about what you just chatted about there, I think. Yeah, President Wright, you just mentioned the new stadium, and I believe a few months ago there was actually conversations about possibly getting a piece of land in Virginia or wherever that is. Do you guys have plans on building kind of like a Jerry world, maybe even like a Patriots place with not just a stadium with great stuff inside, but kind of build up around it with hotels, casinos, who knows? And is that, yeah, that is the rendering that was released. Is that an accurate depiction of what the stadium might look like? I think the stadium could look a bunch of different ways. Um, that's one rendering I've seen. I've seen a couple others that have been developed by folks we work with. But um, 
uh, new ownership has to have a big role in crafting that vision. But I have had the opportunity to talk to all the folks um, who have put bids on the team and were in the running. And I do know that they do all align around that vision of it being more than a football stadium, more than just nine games a year or nine games plus six concerts a year. Something that is a 24 seven, three, six, five draw that is retail, hospitality, all that. And before um, we were talking a lot about the Atlanta Braves stadium um, and the complex that's built around that called the Battery in Atlanta. If you've ever been to a Braves game recently, they have hotels and restaurants and local businesses and residential, local corporate headquarters, a small uh, concert venue that has like, like 6,000 person concerts um, uh, called the Roxy. Like they've got a bunch of stuff built in and that's one of the models that we've been looking at for what we would do. Now, who knows how big it'll be, how small it will be, but I know all the different ownership groups do want to build something like that, um, Bossa. Land and taxes where you're at, hilariously expensive. Excited, oh, to see, baby. excited to see what those prices are that come out for you to build that entire thing. Got a chance to go see Patriot Place up in New England yep. in Foxborough. Awesome. You go to Lambo. Mm -hmm. Lambo, they got to figure it out because they don't even have an owner. So they just like vote on decisions. Hey, you want to buy this? Yeah. You want to make it a museum? Yeah. How Four. much are we going to charge? All of it. And we're they're making like, what is it, 200 million? Something like yep, that. Yeah. They're making like 200 million allegedly because their books had to be made public, nope. which nope. as a player, now that you're on that side, oh, kind of an interesting. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, because the books, you know, the la every negotiation for the CBA were like, open your books. Like, let's see. You know, you want us to do this entire percentage thing, let's do it. Green Bay actually had to do that because they're publicly owned, allegedly, even though Mark Murphy asked us to do it. $200 million, I think, in real estate around the building. And then you see what Jerry did in Arlington. Arlington has become just like Dallas Cowboys world. I think that's the only thing that makes sense for the next stadium, right? I think that's right. And it's, and it's not just good for the business, and that eventually is good for everybody, including the players, but... It's also good for the community. Yes, the fans, it, everybody. It's yeah, like, exactly. And that's like, and that's part of my, you know, the hat that I wore when I was at my previous firm. Is, you know, I have a background in economic development. And if you're actually going to create sustainable jobs, um, create living wages in a community, it's got to be more than something that's just there a few days a year and active a few days a year. It's got to be year round, um, and it's got to draw people to it. That's how you. That's how. That's how you get the rising tide that raises all boats for the entire economy and you can let all sorts of businesses participate. And that's the inspirational thing. And that's the power of the NFL, honestly, like the, the NFL is so much bigger than any other sport. It captures the attention of all of America. It's still the one place where people who hate each other in chat rooms have different political ideologies, can't talk to one another on social media. But when they come together in our stadium, they still high five and hug each other when Terry McLaurin scored the touchdown in Burgundy and gold. It's the, it's the one place where that still happens. And so because of that, when we do a development, it can draw everybody, it can impact the whole community at scale. Um, and, and that's why sometimes the social issues of the day get thrust on the NFL and we're a poor steward of them. Like we shouldn't be having nuanced political conversations, but they're gonna come our way because this is where everybody is. Well, Jason, yeah. we're a better person than you are. Yeah, <laughs> so don't even try it. If you wanna get into a political discussion, we're good at this. Hey, Connor, I'm a better person than you are. I bet y'all are. I bet y'all are. No, yeah, I'm not good at it. Well, we're I'm a better not. person than you are. That's political conversation, isn't Bingo. it? I'm a better person than you. Isn't that basically all political convo? I, think. I mean, but no, no, you know, it's more than that. At this point, political conversation is, I am right, and you are a monster, and deserve to be <laughs> dead or something. It's, that's a that's basically where we're at at this yeah, point. Yeah, we don't love that. But the no. what you said about the locker room in football in the NFL, real, but also in the stadiums, it's a real thing. So if yeah. you're able to create that more than just at eight home games or six stadiums, yeah. and you have a theater, that amphitheater idea down in Atlanta, six thousand, mm -hmm. that's easy to fill up for a lot of guests, a lot of people. And if you're bringing the people in, your name is synonymous with celebration and unity and good times. It's great for everything. I hope you guys absolutely crush that entire thing. Ty has a question for you, Jay. Jason, obviously you can only can control what you can control, but you're a human being, so you obviously see in the paper, hear stuff, you know, about, like, the sale of the team. How do you effectively and efficiently do your job when you're kind of in this, like, purgatory where you don't know who your boss is going to be or who you're going to have to report to? Yeah, I mean, it's the same thing you have as an NFL player, right? You don't know if your coaching staff is going to be there the next year. The whole thing might turn over. I was on a lot of losing teams. I should put it that way. When you're <laughs> yeah. team, you never know. 
<laughs> you never know. You never know what's going to happen the next year. You never know who's going to stick around. Um, but you you execute with excellence. You work hard and you stay focused for a few reasons. One and the most important one to me is just personal integrity. It's the way I was raised. Like my parents were like, if you're going to do something, you are the best at it. And I've hired people that feel the same. We just got a sense of pride and integrity about our work. So we would never let things slip. We're not going to be looking for the next thing because something might change. That's just not who we are as people. Um, it's just not our character. So we're going to be on it. Uh, you know, the second thing is the best thing you can do to enable a smooth transition, make sure you're going to be around or just set up the franchise for success in the future, which we all care about, is do the job well. Because if you're so distracted by the headlines and trying to position yourself and all of that stuff, you're going to F something up. And that's going to cause things to fall apart. And, you know, you got to stay focused. You got to stay focused. And you learn that as a player. Um, but yeah, of course, you're a human being. But I think one of my my superpowers is being calm under pressure. I'm sort of like a duck on water. Oh. I got a lot going on in my head. And I got a lot of activity. I'm always working on something. But you see it below the surface. And on the top, I'll just be real calm, cool, and collected. And I want to I want to do that for our team, and I think that's what the franchise needs. Hey, you're a good executive, pal. That's Hell good yeah. stuff. I, you know, I've gotten a chance to meet some execs now in the world that I'm in, and getting a chance to chat with them and meet a lot of the uh, pretty important executives in the world. Being a human is a massive weapon, a massive weapon in that executive level. Feels like because you're a player, because you've come up the way that you've come up, you've almost aligned yourself to be in a perfect situation for where you are. And to your point, always want to have good film. Yep. Doesn't yeah. matter who's <laughs> going to be the coach, who's going to do yep. anything. I want to put out good film. What is under right. my record is going to be remembered forever. I assume you're saying that to your entire team. I fucking love you, dude. Mm -hmm. I am... I am very happy. We've had to bury your team a couple times. <laughs> a little too long. Okay, we had to. Like the poop pipes bursting, had to do it. Had to. All these extra <laughs> things, had to do it. B bingo, had to do it. All these things have happened, we've had to do it. But every time we talk to you and get a chance to kind of watch what's happening behind the scenes, we just have an immense sense of pride. And I think I speak from me, AJ, D, yep. but in players more so than anything, because players getting into that lane and that avenue, helping that conversation is good for all of us. We hope there's more, but we think you're a fucking alien, pal. You need to know that. So thank you for doing what you're doing. You guys are too. And ah, as you up. know, Jay. When, you do, when you do, but when you do something differently, like folks come at you. And so you you have to be prepared to have opposition when you try to do something differently and innovative and unique. Um, that's what we've done here. We're not afraid of our fair share of real criticism. When it's unwarranted criticism, we'll fight it and we'll push back. But you guys know that. You guys know that same thing. You're not walking anything any different. And the fact that a group of former players and their friends are doing something that's changing the landscape of media. I'm with y'all, too. I rock with y'all, too. Hey, man, I appreciate that. Now, I will say to your point about adversaries and oppositions, you know, I'm 6'1", 260 right now. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I, if anybody wants to, they can do whatever oh. they need to do. You know what I mean? I feel pretty good. Last question here for you, Jay, from Tone Diggs. Yeah, Mr. President, uh, while the sale is potentially going on, I know there's league meetings here coming up in less than a month, I believe, uh, and there's always that one per club meeting uh, during those league meetings, is there a chance during this limbo period that you're going to be the one per club in that meeting, or who would that be while the sale is going on? Yeah, I, I mean, I have been before um, when oh. couldn't make meetings. I've been the one in the I've been the one in the owners' only. What happens in there? How, how was no, yeah, how no, was yeah. Hold on, AJ. Yeah. Great, good call, AJ. How, I, I unlike uh, I unlike many of the people in these meetings don't actually say thing outside of the meeting. <laughs> I, I still think it's, I still think it's wild how within five minutes of a closed door meeting stuff is in the press, but. You know, I I actually rats. What I mean. the They're the rats, Jason. Meeting. Sorry, I, have anything, I don't have anything to offer. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I I don't think so. I think you know, Dan and Tanya have continued to stay engaged where we've asked them to on the business. They respond to my calls when I need decisions. Look, I don't have the money to invest in things we still need to invest in, so that's not coming out of my checkbook. So they're still engaged. So I expect that if there's one final league meeting or more than one final league meeting that Tanya, who's been representing us in those meetings, will probably be there. If not, I'm, I'm happy to represent. AJ had some questions about the one-per-club meeting, I think. Yeah, is in that one-per-club meeting, I know you're not going to gonna say what goes on there, but is it a productive thing? Do you think it's a good thing that you guys continue to do that? I think the one-per-club meeting is where the best 
uh, conversation than real business happens. Um, no phones are, allowed in there? No computers in there? How's uh, it work? No phones. They actually ask you to take no notes. And I think um, the owners are able to have real conversation with one another unfiltered. And while that can be messy at times, it's actually very productive because um, argument and debate can create heat, but it also creates light. And I've seen people in that building um, really get to solutions on things where people are on opposite sides of things. And most stuff that is contentious and meaningful happens in that meeting. Do you, when you're in there, did you feel as if there's somebody in there that's swinging the biggest hammer in the conversation or <laughs> yeah. is everybody kind of in the same place? It's, it's, it's hard. It's hard to say who's the most influential in a room of billionaires. That's a tough, that's a tough one. That's um, why the no. one per club meeting is so interesting. Yeah, Fascinating. No, it's, just, it's, it's, it is a collaborative group, honestly, at its core. Um, that's, and that's a little bit of the beauty of the NFL business model is that your rivals on the field and your business partners off of it. Um, and so, yeah, of course there's debate and contention, um, but in general, there's a level of collaboration and partnership that is actually pretty remarkable. All right, take me there. You're wearing this exact thing here. You walk <laughs> in all by yourself, walk, no nerves at all. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? How we doing? You sit down a sign seat. How's it work? Yeah. I mean, the sign seats, you sit in the same spot every, every time, you know, we're, um, we're you sit by the division or? in between the cowboy in between the cowboys and the bills and across from the bears is where we sit okay. big ass round table it's like a few it depends on where we're at depends on the venue but yeah yeah it's, it's consistent it's structured it's a proper business meeting it's not a soap opera as much as y'all would like it to be mm. it's not a soap opera. i want to see jim ursay up on the table <laughs> yeah <laughs> brother i'm sick of it i tried to buy the guitar <laughs> this fucking asshole ran up the office. you know what i mean that's what we think. That's not happening. That sounds like it is. Look at the uh, with his reaction, uh, maybe. No, no. Um, Let's start some shit on. in there, Jay. Let's get some people say interesting. People say interesting things, but no, there's no, no, no dramat, no drama, no acting, none of that. All right. Well, congrats on all the success. We can't wait to see the next steps. We're happy you didn't give up any leverage for the team in this big time sale. <laughs> and we know that if they want to continue to keep the train on the tracks that they've been on for the last couple of years, even though all hell has been breaking loose around the train, you're the guy to keep around. We're very thankful for you. We're proud of you. Ladies and gentlemen, President Jason Wright. Yeah, Jason! Hey, former player in there. One per club meeting. Let's fucking go. Hell yeah. I've been in a room with uh, about 13 of them, the owners. Mm. When they're speaking freely, it's, it's definitely a very, very interesting conversation. What do you mean by that? You're talking about a bunch of 70 year olds who have had all the power for a long yeah. time? Yeah. Wow. And I was, you know, it was in 2017. So this was, you know, had a different president. A lot of things were going on on the field. Um, it was uh, about maybe 10, 11 players, probably about 12, 13 owners. Blank, Ross, Kraft. What? Uh, McNair, Blood, uh, Rudy, Lurie, Blood, you know, so a lot of a lot of the big dogs. The blank, it was a lot. Of, it was. What you wear? Did you put a suit on when you were in there? Uh, did I have a suit on? I don't know. I'm walking in that thing. What you guys talk club. about? Uh, this is when the the, the, the the protesting and stuff. Race relations. Oh. Yeah, race right, relations. I do believe. Basically, okay. just trying to get everybody from, to stop kneeling at that point. That was that was Ooh. that was the whole entire point of that conversation. Listen, we we understand what you guys are trying to do. The messaging has been conflicted. A lot of I'm people. losing fucking sponsors. Everybody is pissed. Right There's a lot of people that are pissed right now. The people that are on your guys' side are pissed off because our si other side's pissed off. I mean, there's just, everybody's pissed off. Yeah. Can we figure this out? And I think there has been some real grounds. You should be proud of yourself it was for being stuff. in that meeting. I it think was, a lot happened. Yeah, it was some good stuff. A lot of money, right? A lot of good money. Stuff, good stuff that came out of that. Uh, obviously, you got to you know follow up and see what, what's actually happening. But uh, I think the conversation is, is where it started. And to Jason's point, you know, the NFL is a big, it's a big entity. You know, a lot of people, you can lead and change the minds of other people, how you just, you know, treat other individuals and their rights. So um, I think it was um, it was productive. I, I think say. the world got better from that. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Just like he said, you know, um, you know, whenever there's like disagreements and stuff like that and it can get messy, the conversation, it's like normally that's where progress is made. Mm -hmm. too. Yeah. yeah. Like normally that's where people learn about the other side. Mm -hmm. Right. 
other side learns about this side. We might not agree on how this whole thing went, but at least going forward, we kind of have the information that we all have. Normally gets better. Feels like the NFL is just only getting stronger, bigger, and badder yeah. mm -hmm. from this whole thing. Hopefully their impact on the world continues to be the same damn thing. Sounds like it is a focal point. I hope that's the case because it's the best league in the world. Yeah, and can you imagine the spot that Jason Wright's in? Because all the owners have to say, like, hey, can you tell your guy to, you know, stop duct taping <laughs> his hands in his pockets because he actually has to come and do this for us so we can get this thing going. Hey, will you tell – listen, we've tried. He doesn't listen to us. Will you tell him? They've tried to subpoena him for six months, mm -hmm. and they told us – you know how people used to do Edward Forty hands? Yep. Mm -hmm. That's what he was doing. He was walking around with 40s duct taped to his hands saying, I can't take the subpoena. Can't, can't hold I can't take the subpoena. No. Can you tell him to untape the 40s off of his hands, please, so we can subpoena him and move forward? Jason Wright's like, oh, I'm just sitting here. <laughs> he's he's <laughs> my, my boss. Job. That's not my it's your guys' job. Yeah. I work for that guy. That guy's yeah. my boss. That's You're an probably. interesting thing for him to be in. Like right now, how he was talking about the business, his boss is currently the same boss that he's had. Yeah. But he's got a new boss coming. That was a good question there. But the bad film's a real deal. He's getting judged for all executive roles. Right. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of big time jobs opening up. Mm -hmm. Another one just opened up like a couple of days ago at a massive company, Very Comcast or whatever. It's like those executives, you know, there's always a chance yeah. to go yeah. musical chairs. Boom. A lot of there's only a few yep. big brains that can handle those situations. It's almost like professional athletes. Like, there's only so many spots, but there's also only so many talent. Succession. And it kind of gets sorted out. Quarter quarterbacks bouncing around. Here. What's that? No, like that, like the those executives bouncing around. Like, it's just kind of like, you know, Derek Carr Raiders, Derek Carr Saints. Yeah. Like, they, and how is he as an executive? He's good. He's yeah. a good executive. Yeah. Well, you know what I mean? He'll get the job done. Yeah. But he doesn't have an executive. It needs an executive pretty bad. Boom. But Matt's a, in, in Gojo with his succession, with how they are kind of picking and prodding from the other company from – Royco. Well, so my biggest issue is that the people that they're putting into executive positions kind of have a nepotism thing, and do they deserve to be in those positions that they're in is my biggest fight because that happens in real life on a regular basis where there's great executives like Jason Wright, who's a former player, yep. who might not have gotten certain spots because somebody uh, fell from the same ball sack mm -hmm. yep. or potentially knows a family friend that's in there. So that's why whenever we see like Jason Wright or Matson build up his company and that thing, pump for those guys. Yeah. Like, hey, fucking go get it. You didn't know anybody that got you in there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You had to Great earn it more. in there, yeah. and your like ability got you there. I'm, I love that man. It does pain us when we have to say that organization fucking sucks. That's yeah. terrible. Well, like you said though, now the only, I mean, now you just gotta win. Mm -hmm. Like that's kind of like you can do all the other stuff, but like if you you do all the other stuff great, and then you're still going. Six and eleven. Like ultimately, no one's gonna give a shit. Let's go to the phones here uh, before we wrap up hour two. AJ, we should go visit that guy sometime. I think. Mm -hmm. I I would love to. Yeah, he is super impressive. I actually played against him when he was in Northwestern. I think he's a couple years older than me. What you do? Try to knock him out with the crown of your uh, You saw. I saw him right when I was looking at him. I'm like, first off, he looks like he could still play, and then you see the the shape of his head and the size. And I remember, yeah, that dude was a monster to take down. I love the fact. That AJ's first thing, he's like, some people look at shoes first. Sure. Some people look at how they're dressed. You know, some people see like, uh, a little bit of a slob, okay? We can judge a little bit here on them when they meet them. AJ's first thing is, what are the dims on that dome? Man, the dims. dims. What's the circumference? What are the dimensions? AJ, welcome to I know, I know. That's what I'm saying. Every, I still can't get over it. I'm still never going to get used to, them, to that. I'll tell you what, when a guy dropped it in my life here, mm -hmm. what, two months ago at this point, I was like, damn, never saying the word dimensions ever again. I would you. But I do like that you look at a guy and go, hey, what's the dims on this guy's dome? If we had to go a uh, uh, bull in the ring right now, mm. who yeah. is going to win? Probably going to be me. A gap, a gap. D how's D but the dims on D butt's dome? I don't know. D butt, trust me, I watched okay. D butt kill some people. Yeah, yeah, but you guys. And then he would get skull. knocked out. He'd oh, say, yeah. "Oh, it's a stinger." stinger. Those are my Good. favorite. Those are my favorite players, especially safeties I play with. That would knock themselves out and knock the receiver out. I was Gotta like, get up you first. Get, you're a soldier. He's only yeah. 142 pounds, so give him a break. Yeah, dude, he weighed. So the whole scale thing, this scale got to be the worst. Scale. <laughs> There's no way you're 260. You're not 260, are you? AJ, welcome to the fucking show, pal. Okay. <laughs> welcome to what? the show. I watched the I watched during the commercial thing where you got weighed in at 263. That's what I'm saying though. But look at the guy, bro. What do you think that is, huh? Just I look mean, at yeah, that. I mean, yeah, your lower body weight 200 pounds. Apparently, he's properly jocked. Properly, properly. Jocked right I think now. it's great. I, I, if you you carry 260 very well, I wouldn't have guessed that. Thank a you. AQ was 222 uh, the first time. He yeah, was 222 there. out here, and then oh, he was 310 okay. next time. Oh, okay. There it is. <laughs> what is that scale doing? What do you do? like? How is it was the best. It was the most expensive one at the store, <laughs> in which yeah, we were boxing. Pound, 
Hey, put a port, uh, get a 45 pound plate and put it on there and see what it weighs Boom. a couple times. Damn it. We should have thought of that last night. Wow. Why did we not do that? Genius. Well, the problem house. was Bill stepped on it first and broke all the circuitry inside. He was oh, too heavy for geez. it. And then it just gave improper readings. Bill, I don't believe that. Bill, once again, you're getting thrown under the scale here for no reason at all. Well, Bill's been actually, walking. Actually, he has, he has scales because uh, there's certain certain things in the funds. mail service. Uh, you can't mail over five pounds, so he cuts all of his body parts under five all pounds right. and then mails them. That's Huge not true. Heads. This is new Bill. This is B&B. Oi. 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 B&B. Oi. 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 It's brand new Bill. And I would like everybody to act accordingly. Bill's been walking around here properly jocked. He's a well. kid, yeah. properly jocked. Dude, I came in here the other morning and I <laughs> heard the treadmill going max speed, it sounded like. Yeah. And then I heard a uh, uh, and then I heard feet. This dude was running gassers on this fucking treadmill in here, like 7.30 a.m., 7.45. No, he was curling. He was yeah. curling while he was running. Oh, I thought Two that kettlebells. Was yeah. I thought that was a jerk in it. No, that was his feet trying to keep up with the treadmill. We've all heard that. Like, this guy's head, face was running faster than his legs were yep. on the treadmill in here. My first thought was, going to get sued. This guy's going to get kicked yeah. off this mm. treadmill. Yep, chewed up. And then I asked him, he goes, oh, a minute 30 on, a minute 30 off, just running oh. full sprints. He's, I think he's going to do them right now. He's a fucking dog, dude. Yeah, this is, is BNB. He still owns the Boy. record. Huh? Oh, Smart. he's going to weigh the, the plate. Weigh the plate. Yeah. Now, granted, Bill, I do wish that your toxic brain would have thought of the same thing that toxic AJ thought of last night. That would have been great. If, how do we miss that? <laughs> That's a good question. This is an embarrassment. It was a, hey, We were on here for a long time. I don't know how everybody's brain was operating. But he's going after. to weigh it on a different surface than you guys weighed in. So how yeah, that? Bill, the floor matters. Come on, <laughs> Bill. Get in the kitchen. Let's go to the 5 Hour Energy phone line. Let's go to Dan in Iowa. Dan, what's going on, pal? Hey, Pat and the boys. Hey, I just want to say uh, appreciate you guys. Thanks for... I think it was your wife said, uh, providing us a mental vacation throughout the day. Um, I just love you guys. Dan, we love you too, man. Love you, Dan. Love part you, Dan. Of Iowa. Love you, Dan. All right, boys. Just wanted to say thank you. All right. What, what part, part of Iowa, Dan? Dan Northwest Iowa. Yeah, we farm, of course. Surprise, surprise. I love but, that. Uh, surprise, surprise. Where hey, at? What, are you farm, what are you farming, Dan? Corn? Corn and soybeans, yep. Ooh. So what type of seeds all, we using? All. What type of seeds we using, pal? What do we got going on over there? Is Bill Gates trying to get I your eat. land? <laughs> uh, you know, a lot of that is false. He's bought in some land up in the Dakotas and whatnot, but I think it's a good concern. I don't want that nerd owning our ground. Oh, yeah. okay, I like oh, yeah. that. Yeah. I, obviously, that is exactly what AJ wanted from you, Dan, so thank you for showing up for him there. Uh, you, you, What type of seed do you use? Because I heard another Iowa product. Uh, what's that thing that kills? Um, Pesticide? No, Roundup? Uh, Roundup. Uh, Roundup. John Wayne Gacy? Roundup. Roundup is Listen from Iowa, and I heard now that there's seeds that are made that are anti-Roundup Due to that, but then there's yeah. a whole lawsuit that's taking place mm. around somebody's yeah. seeds getting yeah. on somebody else's land. Okay, so the Roundup thing has been around for like 25, 30 years. Okay. And it's all bullshit. That's all California made up. A bunch of Hell lawyers yeah, got together mm. and, hey, we're going to start making money off convincing, you know, a jury that Roundup is bad. We still use Roundup. Roundup's used all over. The U.S. Okay. And to be quite honest, if any of these people give a shit about world hunger, they would kind of lay off the whole anti-GMO, uh, the anti-Roundup, all that crap. And, you know, they're not the ones that will be starving. It's it's these, these, these poor kids in Africa and people that they don't have to see. That's who will starve if we buckle in and go you know, non-GMO and all green. Hey, but I heard that crap. GMO shit's yeah. terrible for me. Isn't it the pesticides and all that? Isn't it terrible for me? No, Pat. Yeah, most of that is, uh, is it's feed grains that we're feeding to livestock. And to, and to think that somehow that's transferring through the plant and then 15 months later it's being fed through a calf or a, a, mm. a, a hog somehow is going to make it through to you. It's, it's ridiculous. All it's, right. just, it's just the 
same old crap. All right, Dan, okay. we appreciate the hell out of you. Sorry we didn't uh, – we had a mental vacation going, and then we drove, drove you right back into <laughs> the hell. We appreciate the hell out of you, Dan. Hell yeah, Dan. I Peace. fucking love that guy. What a legend. How about Dan just like, I'm about sick of them fucking with our shit. Yeah. yeah. Okay? This crap. Ha- you ever been here? No. Do you have any idea about this? No, you no. don't. Please do not speak about it anymore. Cause kids in Africa to starve. They rotate. They rotate the corn and the soy each year, correct? Well, it's got to be knee high by the Fourth of July. That's right. That's but if you do saying. corn one year, you got to do soy the next year. And that is correct. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Soil. Yeah. Yep. Soil. So I, I mean, it's gonna surprise nobody. I obviously know some farmers. Obviously. Mm-hmm. I do think my Rolodex might be one of the widest in history of humans that I've just happened to be high around and just ask. 45 minutes worth of questions. Mm-hmm. And then we just kind of get along there. That seed conversation with the roundup thing, massive ordeal. Ma- yeah. We're talking like hours on the field to do stuff that other things weren't able to do. And then there was like some lawsuit about some of these seeds were blown into somebody else's field. Yep. That field, though, owned by somebody with special interest, to your point, not that whole thing, which then added into a full, it became a big thing. And farmers, they don't want to deal with the bu- now some. I, this is me. Most. They don't want to deal with all the bullshit. Yeah. So like when a narrative's getting built outside of their world, they don't even know that it's getting built until it's like, boom! Now we got to all answer all these questions or change completely. It's like the farmers have really been. I don't want to be. I don't want to say like stuck in the middle of some shit, but there's some shit popping off with our farmers. I think that they've been caught right in the middle of. And they're just trying to do what they've been doing for like five, ten generations. Or exactly. It's a wild time right now in the farming world. Yeah, I would take a bullet for that guy, Dan. <laughs> I don't know where he lives in Northwest Iowa, but that's an Iowa I can fucking get behind, behind of, and be proud of. I love Dan. You guys don't even say cities out there, aren't you? Well, that's what I was trying. I mean, Northwestern. If, if, <laughs> yeah. if, if, if you're them. from Iowa, you know you pick and prod a little bit because I. Yeah. But but same deal. Like there are fucking so many cities in Northwest Iowa. Like he he might be from a town of like you know four hundred people. Yeah. Like, geez. Yeah, and they all used to have jobs until they started putting regulations. That's exactly right. Bitches. Let's go to a break. Uh, hour three, we'll be on the other side. Shout out to Dan. Shout out to everybody that listens, man. Hell, Hell yeah. yeah. We appreciate you. Honestly, genuinely. Yes. Thank you so much. Very grateful. Yeah. Why was Jason Wright going in that bullshit? Then Rich Eisen yesterday. I'm about sick of these people coming on the show. We're talking to you. Okay. Yeah. We don't need you telling us yeah. anything nice. Save it. We say the nice stuff around here. Yeah. Get off our air. Yeah. Punks. It's crap. It is crop. I don't want to swear. Crop. Yeah. <laughs> but it's bull. <laughs> I almost said a cuss word. Chris Ballard. <laughs> Not happy. Not Both happy it. at all. All right, we'll cover some uh, draft stuff. Big shout out to Jason Wright. Some storylines. Where's D Hop going to go? Sounds Is like he? Nowhere. Yeah. Uh, Veach was kind of like. We talked to Brett Veach last night after he made his pick at 1:45 a.m. Eastern Standard Time last oh, night, mm-hmm. and uh, we got, we actually wrapped up the show, and then we heard he wanted to still come on. We're like. Okay. Have to talk to like the Super Bowl. He's a guy. I love yeah. that man. He had a great draft. He brings in King Felix. And then we ask him about weapons. And he starts talking about all the draft picks he still has and what they were going to do. They were thinking about taking a weapon in the first round. And then obviously with the way the board fell, we had to trust our board. They take King Felix and Udike Uzama yep. mm-hmm. out of uh, Kansas State, clearly. Yep. Yep. Right down the road there. Thank you. Uh, had him on the wrong team on game day. We actually talked to him about that last night, but they might be in for another weapon. Oh, yeah. Is D-Hop that weapon? Woo. Who knows? We'll take some more phone calls, and we'll be joined by Ian Rappaport. What does he know? And will he tell us anything? Probably not. Hopefully he's not too hungover. Rounds two and three of the draft are tonight at oh. seven. Ian Rappaport will give us all the information we need on the other side. Be a friend. Tell a friend something nice. Take five. Bye. Bye. Well, nonetheless, as of February 1st, uh, Pat McAfee is officially a contributor with WWE. I've been preparing for this my entire life. It's time to toast the boys and toast the brand. Back of his wanted to drink beer with Stone Cold forever. Stunner! Stunner! There's a point in my life, all I could think about doing was professional wrestling. Knock
Bay closing in on another WrestleMania victory. Oh! First, we're going to have to get the OKs, obviously. And we did from people high up. They were the only people that knew for a while. There was like three people that knew in the whole world that that was going to potentially be a situation for a little bit. City of Stars, Austin Connors here. We will be there tonight. Nobody's supposed to know we're here. It's going to be tough. And if you're a man that's only known for wearing tank tops, you kind of got to cover it up. There's some bunk beds there. You know, there's a shit on a shower here in the back. He sat in that bus six, seven, eight hours, yeah, nine, yeah. ten hours. I'm coming down, I think. Holy fuck, what a view that's gonna be. Hell yeah. Look at all those fucking people are gonna be there. Just waiting, you know, for an opportunity to potentially have a WrestleMania moment. It's ridiculous. This is awesome. WWE is just like the best at operating. They take care of the non-obvious. So we're very thankful to be here. And tonight should be walking. Oh, yeah. I think there's like three people in here. Are we not supposed to come in here? No. Yeah. Four now. Four Look now. at you. Yeah. I'll, say a word. I'll see you at uh, SoFi. You're going to be in LA? I don't know. George is, uh, you know. It's a loaded question. George, we don't know. George, you don't <laughs> know. Maybe. What's up, stud? Oh, nice. <laughs> As soon as I saw George showcase that yeah. tight end university tank top, I knew there was a chance old George about to do something special. Yeah. <laughs> Are you kidding me, Welcome to WrestleMania! You know, the night was getting late. We're sure. Yeah, we, we didn't know if a moment was going to pop up where maybe my services could be utilized. I haven't been in a ring since SummerSlam. Okay, like not even in one. All I wanted was the Miz to have an opportunity to have a match. Just a WrestleMania match. Yeah, yeah. good guy stand there. And then the Miz mentions, I sent out an open challenge, and we go, Oh my God. There it is. And I put out an open challenge, and no one responded. Why? Because I'm the Miz, and I'm awesome! Hey. Let's go! I have walked out into a stadium as a WWE superstar probably a million times in my head. WrestleMania was missing Pat McAfee in the Pat McAfee show. And I'm thankful to the WWE Universe that said hello whenever I came out on that massive fucking stage. By the way, there's only two announcers undefeated in WrestleMania history, me and Pat. I can't believe McAfee's here. You're a legend, dog. You're the Hello, best, man. dog. Hello, miss. None of us saw this alleged open challenge that you said. But good news. This is my WrestleMania tank top. If you still would like a match, why don't you let me beat your ass right here, right now? You all want to see The Miz versus Pat McAfee right here, right now! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! I'm the host of WrestleMania, and I cannot make matches official. Miz, I do believe your tiny balls are showing. Tiny balls. Tiny balls. Baby meat as well. There's 80,497 people here. Somebody has to be able to make a match official somewhere. I am the dog father and the host of WrestleMania, so I feel like I could make that match happen. Right now, we got a ref. We got you. We got you. Let's get cranky. I'm out. Thank 
top left. He's got sparkles on it. You're behind this, aren't you? But no, I had no idea. You said the same thing in the Rumble. I didn't know this guy was showing up. I'm so thankful to the people at the WWE. It was a super cool night, oh. super cool moment, and I'm very thankful for it all. 5.30 a.m. Sunday. This day started 6.30 a.m. Saturday. So much cool shit happened in between now and then. Joke of an existence. I'm very thankful for everything. Let's go take a nap. Why? Hey. Why? Let's go. This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, you never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God <laughs> damn it! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Fuck, fuck, then come. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome. On this feel-good Friday of Draft Spectacular Week, April 28, 2023, Hour 3 starts now. Feel good! Friday, that's AJ Hawk. The Toxic Ooh. Table's here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. One half of the hammer, Dad. Dad. Cowboys, Ten Diggs is here. And the man that hosts everything, DB, and the Man to Man podcast. Great friend of the program. Great to see you back. The ever-handsome, 184-pounder, Darius Butler. Yeah. Yeah. Before we get to our next guest, AJ, there was a lot of question marks on whether or not the scale that we used <laughs> yesterday was accurate. So AJ Hawk mentioned something that was brilliant. He said, why don't you go get a 45-pound plate, put it on a scale, you'll immediately be able to tell how big the difference was. So Bill McComas, always on top of things, yep. went and did that. He's incredibly nice shoes, standing there awkwardly around <laughs> as if he's taking a pee, 44.6 <laughs> pounds. AJ, I'm fucking 260, bro. Okay. Hell yeah. It's awesome. Good for you. You should try to get up to 300. <laughs> should. It's exactly what I said. Ty, Ty <laughs> actually said. Yeah. Ty, so whenever that weight got put on the way, uh, on the scale, we looked at it. We're like, damn, that thing's accurate. Yeah, okay. It seems like the scale's accurate. I did have cowboy boots on, and they were Cayman Crocs, so they were a little bit heavy. Sure. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and knock a couple so pounds nice. off. Had to watch on. I was holding the phone, the whole yep. thing. I'm like 255, though, probably 256. Yeah. And Ty said... You need to just go ahead and put on another 45. Yeah. You need to be 300 pounds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just properly jocked. Properly jocked. Could you imagine me walking around a 300? Oh, just, my yeah. God. My knees would jogged. be so pissed. <laughs> yeah. My knees would be so mad. I need to lose some weight, I think. Why? Don't you feel good? I do. I feel great. I feel always, good. You look good. Who cares? Who cares what the scale says? I've always said yeah. I have heavy organs, but I'm a fucking three technique right now, bro. Hell yeah. 260 yeah. in the NFL? Maybe in high school. Maybe rusher. in high school three. What's high Aaron Donald? technique. 285? Yeah. 280, yeah. He's, pretty, yeah. He's pretty lean. What was Robert Mathis? 
240. I used to weigh in or near him. Yeah, Edge. every once in a while, I'd weigh in heavier yeah, than him for sure. Edge. And he would just go slaw, <laughs> walk by me or whatever. And I'm, Nolan what? Smith, I nope. mean Will yeah. Anderson. You're you're past them. I've always said I have heavy organs. Yeah, you know I think that's yeah. the case. Always been I, dense, very dense. I don't think I've ever been at this uh, weight though without just my neck. In my face, just being one blob. So you're saying property. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's mm -hmm. why you're properly jocked. That's only how I judge how heavy I probably am. Yeah. Okay, under 225, I can dunk. I know that. Mm -hmm. So that's normally mm -hmm. what I'm there. Over 235, neck gets massive. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on here. Properly this is a weird jocked. time. Feels like I should maybe make a run for it and get in shape. Yeah, uh, if you did go for 300, that'd be crop. Okay. Why would it be crop? That's just crop. No, I don't. I don't think no. it'd be crop at all. It'd be very real. No, you got to. No, you got to go for three hundred. I'm saying if you didn't go for three hundred, be crop. Oh, you're saying I should go for three hundred yeah. because if I don't, big yeah. crop. That's crop. Yeah. Oh. Say so you go for two forty. Wow, two thirty five. That's, that's, that's a friend. Crop. Shredded. That's a friend right there. That's crop. you Shredded. asshole. You want me to die? No, three hundred. Darius is like Pat. Maybe cut fifteen. Pounds. I didn't say stay there. I didn't say stay at three hundred. I said get up there so you can be like, yeah, I was a three hundred pounder at one point. Three bills. Jared top. It ain't that fun. I was at 270 at one point. Zito, you're Zito. <laughs> what? Jeez. Zito. Don't do that Come to on. yourself. Come on. Joining That's us now crap. is a man who hasn't cracked 160 ever in his life. <laughs> Used to be a crew member in college, a wrestler in high school. Now he's the senior insider for the league, the league's network, what? the league's website, what? and the league's streaming service, NFL Plus. Plus. Host of the Insiders and the weekly wrap up with Rap Sheet and Friends. He's been in Kansas City, the site of the draft, for the last four weeks. Probably boozed up, but certainly in the know. Ladies and gentlemen, Ian Rappaport. Yeah, How are you, pal? What's up? Um, I uh, might crack 160 now. Went to Joe's KC, had a big tub of burn ends, had a Z Man. It was amazing. And uh, I think I might be over that 160 mark. And what are you? What are you? Now, this seems like such a. Uh, Hilarious way to start a conversation with an insider who's at the draft mm -hmm. with a lot of draft stories, and we will certainly get to all sure. of those. But we were just yeah. talking about weight. I just learned that I'm like 255 pounds right now. Just learned it. Literally just moments ago. Thought the scale was maybe off 15, 20 pounds. Maybe I'll be 240. 30. It's pretty spot on. So I'm properly jocked right now. I'm a <laughs> fucking big guy right now, okay? You... I said probably never cracked 160. That's because you're always in such good shape. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. What are you, 135, yeah. 140? Uh, no, I am. That's so right. when the season starts, I'm like one, I would say 54. And then by the time the season ends, I'm like 163. Oh, you up. Even though I exercise every day. Um, and now I'm trying to work my way down. Okay, so actually, I think one one fifty one fifty eight one fifty nine bro is a proper derby red carpet looking spot. Uh, oh yeah, and, and now you have a horse in there, so you're going to gain at least yeah. ten pounds day of the mm -hmm. race. We assume from yeah. all the either nervous drinking or celebratory boozing. Uh, uh, I yes. should maybe work at a state fair. One sixty, I said to this fucking guy. I've seen him how many times? Two times. Yeah, yeah. that's it. I'm a state fair corny guy. Yeah. Yeah. What? Step up. Let me. Yeah, that was your good. Way. I feel that's pretty good, good about that. Okay, I win those all the time. By the way. Really? Because of what we just learned. Well, yeah. Me. Oh, yeah. You would dominate that. Are, yeah. Are you also good at the like how many M and M's are in the jar thing? No, I am. I am properly terrible at that. That was our <laughs> giveaway. Um, that was our giveaway last year for our draft spectacular. Just a jar of peanut M and M's. Mm -hmm. There was a little bit of. Remember, there was a little bit of water in there the. Was, yeah. In the bucket, so it it melted like seven, eight of them together. Yeah. So then we had to do like a full. Oh, this one, is, it's what, one. Is, what does it count as Late. because it was a giveaway i'm terrible at that one i'm not great last night's giveaway was the poundage mm -hmm. of four people myself aq darius and pac-man jones it ended up being 942 pounds which connor guessed immediately upon hearing about Crazy. the contest yeah. let's move on to the draft we were live for five hours last night you were i assume the same exact thing will levis still hasn't been drafted there's obviously rounds two and three tonight he's probably still in kansas city what do you hearing about Will Levis and was that all just media driven I guess not team driven about him being top five he was minus 1500 to go top five which is basically uh, a given that's a mortal lock yes pretty much minus 1500 he's still available what happened and what do you think is going to happen and who is that she sounds awesome they're naked ladies what yeah I mean they uh well, I missed because I was at Joe's Kissy yeah, I missed the Molly Cruz sound check uh, but I'll be going to the concert later from our set right here because they're going to be literally like, right behind us. So. I don't know who this person is. 
She seems to love talking when I'm either talking on your show or on NFL Network or whatever. Oh, sounds like you got a little um, heat with this. Yeah. Oh, okay, got I it. mean, it's just ridiculous. I mean, uh, Eisen was worse yesterday. He kept mentioning how loud the house fan was. I was dealing with the outside noise. It's always well. Eisen's. Eisen's yeah. always there's something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what are we doing? Can we yeah. <laughs> Can we? Uh, Eisen was on the show yesterday, and we Tone actually asked him, "Hey, but the fuckeries that happened during the draft, how do you feel about it?" And he was like, "This is the kids' moment, you know." And he's done. <laughs> this moment is when Rich Eisen almost flipped the set, yeah, and almost quit the NFL. I will never numbers. forget him away. It was awesome. I will never forget it. Yeah, but that's that's a part of the gem of the NFL draft. But let's talk about Will Levis. And if okay. you, you so get talk about, about him right now, okay. No, no. Um, so let's talk about Levis. I do not think it was media driven that he was a potential first rounder. I do not think it was bogus that he was a potential top five pick. I do know the Colts liked him a lot. Chris Ballard liked him a lot. Um, it sound, I mean, look, but we've known. We've known that Shane Steichen was the guy who, you know, helped turn Jalen Hurts into Jalen Hurts. The match skill set wise with Anthony Richardson is not perfect, but there's obviously a lot to like there. I think based on that alone, you know, I felt Richardson was a pretty good lock, pretty good pick there, but I didn't know for sure. But here was the problem, and this is something that I know Will Levis knew going into last night. If he was not picked at four, it was going to be a long wait. Like, I kept going up and down the first round, and I'm looking at the spots. I'm like, Bucks, he's not going to. Lions, no chance. Vikings did not think that was in the mix. And I, I just – everyone else has a quarterback. And so, like, I knew it was going to be a long once you got to four. I just didn't know it was going to be all the way. Yeah. And, and I also think he is not – I do not believe he'll be back in the green room tonight. Good. He shouldn't have been there last night. Already like, confirmed he is not going back. Okay, good. Yeah. Congrats to him. Bad advice last night from yeah. whoever. You only bring one suit. Yeah. Think about it. You only bring one suit, probably. He didn't He didn't get a second one made, I'm guessing. And no, you, as well. can, you, can, you can change the shirt. Change the wow. shirt and tie. It looks like a new suit. Don't be a scumbag, Ian, okay? Could. Do the people that are watching at least a little bit of favor of respect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know I, mean? I would never do that. Yeah, I wear the same four sport coats everywhere, all day, <laughs> everything. That's all I got. I saw. I got one tailored, one that used to be my wedding and court suit. It mm -hmm. turned into, oh. and then and funeral, and then <laughs> wow, one other one that's just been old faithful since like high school. And that is pretty much all I got. I need to mature. But to your point, eh, there's no way anybody prepares to go to night two after night one. Who was there in Nashville? Drew Locke. Yeah, Drew Locke. Yeah, he did Drew, go. Drew Locke was still there the second night or whatever. Yeah. Do you know I, Smith? Did I, well, I, I actually – so I actually felt like a similar situation with Drew Locke. I remember talking – he's got, you know, same age in CAA like Will Levison. Oh, no. And Jimmy Sexton is one of the guys who represents him along with Ed Berry. Um, and do a really good job of, of figuring out, like, where is the guy going to go? And going in, I knew there were, if it wasn't Colts, there was not another place. And I felt the same with Drew Locke of like, you know, if he doesn't go in the top 10, he just might not go. And it sucks. And you got to feel for Will Levis. But like, with quarterbacks, there's just not a lot of, it's like musical chairs. There's not a lot of chairs. Yeah, it sucks. Hey, we hope he goes to a team and has great success. I am thrilled we took Anthony Richardson, though. Yeah, we'll tell you yeah, that. Yeah. Go ahead, AJ, your question for rep. Ian, what was uh, your biggest surprise from the first round? And also, what can we expect from these these following rounds coming up? Any fireworks, any vets included in trades or anything going on? Um, okay, so we'll get to the, the, the last part first. Um, when a team takes a starter at a position where there's only one, you know, you start to say, like, well, could there be a trade? I think, you know, DeAndre Swift is someone I would, I would wonder about. You know, the Lions took a starting running back in Jameer Gibbs. I knew they loved him. I did not know they loved him at 12. I thought it would be at 20, but like, if you like a guy, just take him. So I do wonder if teams now see that and go, okay, I wonder if we could potentially trade for DeAndre Swift, who is a dual threat and is a really good player. Um, I think that would be an interesting one to watch today. The surprise, so, you know, you guys know I felt pretty confident about mm -hmm. DJ Stroud going. Yeah, but we, and, hey, wait, hey, Ian, yeah. we will bring up we go around. through all the different media sure. speculation and narratives, you were always. Texans are taking a quarterback. Texans are taking C.J. Stroud. Because you said when push comes to shove, this team needs a quarterback, and C.J. Stroud has been clearly the second-best quarterback in this class since the beginning. They're going to do it. You, hey, you stood in the face of some criticism. Some people were taking shots at your shins, saying Ian Rappaport doesn't know anybody, yeah. obviously, in any building. You got that one right. Daniel, Not as right as Daniel Jeremiah. No. But you did get that one right, and you yeah. have had it right. I appreciate that. But here's so and I was so he gets picked 
And I'm like, all right, nailed that one, like feeling really good about myself. And what I also knew is once he was picked at two, the trade market evaporated at three. So I'm like, all right, cool. So if you go to two, Paris Johnson goes to three of the Cardinals, which I knew was going to happen. Everything is fine. And then I get a text and the text says, trade with Texas. And like, I look at it and I kind of go back to my computer and I'm like, wait a minute. And I literally have to look back and go, trade with Texans. Like, is the trade done? Are they come? And it was like, yes, it is done. And it even surprised me. And I, I was like, you know, trying to wave our producer, like, get me on, get me on. Like, this trade is happening. But I, even though our guy Daniel Jeremiah did it in his mock draft, it was still like stunning in the moment. Like, I, and I thought, you know, Nick Casario did a really, really nice job. Like, he got two of the best players. Like, that was, that was stunning for me. Oh, yeah, a lot of momentum. And, and we talked to Daniel Jeremiah yesterday, and we said, if this happens in six hours from now, that'll be electrifying. And then we were all taking him back, too, because I think it came out that Paris was going there or something like that or was already picked. Yeah. And then it was like, no, Houston Texans traded to three again. Zito saying it in my, in my ear back there. And I'm, like, thinking to myself, Daniel Jeremiah's mock. Holy shit, no way they do this. They yeah. change the momentum of the entire night for them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now there's obviously going to be naysayers who say, you gave away a first-rounder of the future for this to make this move. Did you really need it? It's like if Will and CJ go on to carry both sides of that ball to successful football, who gives a fuck what mm-hmm. you gave up in the future to make that happen? And they're picking number two overall for a reason, just like the Colts are picking number four overall for a reason. It's time to make a change, and your fans will appreciate it. I think the Texans will be pumped. Ty Schmidt has a question for you, Ian. Rep sheet, along the same lines as Levis with, like, whether it's media-driven or, or what the case is, like, what happened with the tight ends leading up to the draft? Everyone who does mock drafts and, you know, all these insiders were saying that this is the deepest tight end class we've had in a really long time. We thought maybe three or four guys were going to get taken, and then the first one wasn't Dalton Kincaid and until what 24 or 26 like what the hell happened there why why weren't four tight ends taken in the first round so that is a that's a good question and i would say the media stuff was all right it is a very very deep tight end class the problem is when you when your team like tight end is not you know it's not edge rusher it's not corner it's certainly not quarterback it's not a like with all due respect the dogs who played in his friends um, it's not a premium, premium position. So if you're like, all right, I like this guy in round one, but I like this other three, these other three guys almost as good, like I'll just wait and take them in round two and three. And I think a lot of that happened where it's like, you know what? I, I, I can just wait. So because of like, not because of the media, but because everyone knew the tight end class was so deep, it actually artificially drops everyone else down. Supply demand. Because you can just be patient. Oh. Supply right. demand. This is classic business. Mm-hmm. You know this man mean? knows. But normally yeah. whenever a market is good, that's good for the position because they're going to go earlier. Instead, this one seemingly pushed it back to the second round. Kind of sucks for the tight ends. Yeah. Kind of yeah. sucks that Brutal. it didn't go the other way. Because like when wide receivers were a plethora over the last couple of years, they're all going. Top 10. And earlier because everybody else is going. So if a run on tight end starts earlier in the night, more tight ends probably go, we think, right? We saw it with the receivers last night. Boom, First boom, one boom. went, and then it was like, all right, this has got to be a run on receivers. And then it was like Ravens, Vikings, Giants didn't, but uh, who was the Chargers. Chargers. Z- Chargers, Z- yeah. Chargers with Quentin Johnston. Yeah, so it was once one went, it was like, all right, this has got to be a run on receivers. Next well, and the tight end that got picked, Dalton Kincaid, we were told directly from Brandon Bean, like, He's a wide receiver. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That's that's pretty much what he told us. He said, yeah, he's certainly a tight end, I guess. But we're going to see more at F, I think is what he said. Yeah, F. Yeah, instead of the X. He, he's, he's, he's basically Cole Beasley, right? He's a slot receiver or bigger. Jeez. He's much bigger, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he, like, they're both, I mean, that's they're pretty, both white, yeah. right? Yeah, they're both white. Yeah, I don't so know. That was I, good. Yeah, I don't, this I don't see that. rap? Yeah. yeah. You don't see that? He's from Utah. I doubt he raps. What's your deal? So wow. you, you don't see that other one, but then that one you do see. Kind of racist. Oh my team. god! Yeah. Hey, sorry, rap. Jeez. Oh god! I had no idea what we were talking yeah. to. <laughs> Tone has a question for yeah. you, rap. Hey, let's start the draft tonight at number thirty-two. The Pittsburgh Steelers. Hearing that there is a lot of calls happening to Omar Khan and Mike Tomlin at number thirty-two. Uh, is there a chance that they stick and pick? Is there a chance that someone comes up to get Levis? What's the what are they asking? Uh, what's going on at thirty two to start tonight? So, you know, 
draft as 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 we've expertly detailed over the last month. Draft predictions are impossible. Mm-hmm. But I would say this: I would be surprised if someone traded up to thirty two to Levis, because if you like him that much, you would have done it at like twenty nine, thirty, thirty one to get the fifth year option. But that like it, it makes. Mm. Bean, Bean so, and Veach both said that they were getting calls for, and the Eagles said they were getting calls for uh, teams to come up, but was that not for Leviston, do you think? And and the Saints were too. I think they all were. I just, based on the teams, and so like Atlanta, Tennessee, Chicago, like there were a lot of teams who were, uh, Rams, a lot of teams who were calling up, like maybe the Titans for a quarterback, but I would be surprised if the rest of them were. So I imagine that was for other positions. Okay. Uh, do you think 32 gets traded, though, inevitably? Um, I kind of think so, yeah. Um, and, and you know, for the Steelers, I mean, I know – I don't know who they're going to take, but I know that Joey Porter Jr. would be fun and would make a lot of sense. I'm not sure you have to take him at 32, so maybe they slide back. And that's who they'll take. We'll see. But I, just pure fun, that would be a pretty good one. Yeah, I think so, too. Would be The city of Pittsburgh would love oh, it. Yeah. They also mm-hmm. love that the a tackle was brought in. That's the first offensive lineman or tackle that's been drafted there a long time. Right? Since DeCastro, if I, off the top of my head, if I had to take DeCastro and Pouncey were first-rounders, I believe. But that's interior, oh, right? Tackle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tackles, I can't No, Yeah, you're right. I don't think a tackle's been drafted by Pittsburgh in, like, for a like, long, 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 long time. Long. So, Kenny Pickett, you think he's a guy? You get him some protection, yep. good play. If you're able to get a generational Joey Porter Jr., here we go. Pittsburgh's happy. Matt Canada, offense coordinator, though, yep, right. going to have to learn how to call plays in a minute. That's true. Yeah. Uh, Connor has a question for you. Yeah, Rapshi, Will Love is not the only quarterback that didn't go in the first round that we all kind of were uh, convinced that would. Hendon Hooker, is he almost above Will Levis now? Like if Ooh. a team was going to draft a QB, you mentioned the Titans, would they take Hooker over Levis? Yeah, I, I – I do wonder about that, and I not impossible. Um, because I think for Levis, maybe he's not quite for everyone. I think Henry Hooker doing the draft process, like had he not had a torn ACL, I'm pretty sure he would have gone somewhere in the first round. So, you know, even though Levis was in play at four, and even though that was real, if Hooker went ahead of him today, tonight, I, I wouldn't, like, that makes sense. Like, there would be some teams, like, you know, I don't know what Tennessee is going to do, but like, let's say they look at quarterbacks, like hometown kid, great character, like, you know, would have been a first rounder with that in ACL. Like, got a year with Tannehill, you're paying him thirty six million. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Was right? that stuff with Levis true about him during the interviews? Because that all kind of yeah, came out after that yeah. came out after the first what, round. And his tone. What? What was it? Yeah, it was his tone. He was kind of no. not. What was it? There was his toe, but then, yeah, it was the... Yeah, he was, like, entitled in interviews, or he... That was on the... There was just some tweets. People were trying to project, I think, why what happened last night was happening. Minus 1,500 is a mortal lock to go in the top five. I understand. I know, like, we talk about... And how would we not know that? We found out about a fake S2 score from C.J. Stroud. If there was something that seems to be legit that dropped him way out there... Way out. Second round drafted quarterbacks have had. He was never up there. Ever? Had to. I saw saw there was a quote from a GM today that uh, that was all media driven and he's actually getting drafted on based on his tape. So even even that though, like I do not I do not think that's true because if you look at his tape from last year, the twenty twenty one season, he's a lock first rounder. So like I've been talking to a lot of holy shit. Ian, you watching tape? I'm not watching tape. I talk to other people who watch tape. Oh, who are they? Who are they? We need to know. I think Go that's on. a big part of this whole thing. Uh, a lot of general managers and coordinators and head coaches. A lot of oh. Oh, oh, oh. So the decision yeah. makers you just said. No, but I, I think the conversation was like, oh, Will Levis is going up the draft board. And then C.J. Stroud was all this stuff. Yeah, just complete horseshit. Why is that the storyline? Like, why is that what we're it's talking crazy. about? And it, was, I, there I something, no was there something about Will Levis that maybe we did not hear about publicly before the draft? Was there anything? We know, what, Get bananas to. with yep. the peel, yep. coffee, yep. coffee yep. with mayo. He's properly jocked. Properly yep. jocked up. Probably jocked. Didn't have a good O-line, didn't win. There was a lot of things coming out about him. Didn't want to play in the pool. Yeah, didn't want to play in the pool. There was a lot of coach, things. Probably wasn't coached well last year. So, by the way, I think the banana oh. thing is fake. Stoops? I think the man Did we know that? Fake. No, we don't know. He's on yeah, video. I, I heard banana, right? Yeah, he looks real yeah, jock too. Probably jock. I think it's fake. Anyway, 
Um, oh. So here's the problem with what oh, was a crime. Like, uh, Will Levis is very intense. Okay, he takes it very seriously. He is extremely intense. And so, did that rub people the wrong way? Maybe. Hmm. Very good quarterbacks hmm. are very intense. Like I say this all the time. These are not normal people. So I don't know the difference between someone who's like too intense or someone who wants to win insanely badly and will do literally everything to do it. And in the end, Will Levis, like whatever mentality he has of just like wanting it very bad and wanting everything to be perfect, like that might lead him to be a great football player. But hell, we don't know. Hell yeah. So he was – That's horseshit. He tries too hard. Yeah, what? He cares too much. You mean like he's part of like the Gus Farratt route tree where he like got him mad and headbutted the wall? So you're telling me that guys like, you know, Rodgers and like Brady even can't right. like sit down and have like a normal conversation with the GM without them being like, this guy's a fucking weirdo. Jesus Christ. Like, turn it off. <laughs> you can be intense on the football <laughs> field and know how to act like a human being around someone who's going to potentially draft you. Yep. That's horseshit. That yeah. sounds weird. It, that sounds like a weird story that we would we should have heard about, shouldn't it be? Shouldn't we have heard about yeah, that? But 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 the problem is if, the, if and I and I don't know like I just know that he is intense. I don't know how much that like turned off people. You know, um, I just what we do now is we try to figure out like how did this happen, right? Like I how did fucking win. Was we're gonna win that when people are interviewing him. Gee, that's bullshit. Hey, if you were a kitchen <laughs> utensil, yeah. what would have been? Fucking four night throw. Hey, but if you're a dog, <laughs> that motherfucker still get drafted though. He's still getting drafted. How right. if, you, if you're still it's, that guy, you you gonna draft it? Plenty of weirdos been drafted in the true. fucking top five, top yeah. ten. So what was the utensil? A knife through your fucking throat, <laughs> brother. <laughs> what if he came out of here? That's such good. That was so fast, guy. Yeah. Killer. So oh, bad. Shit. <laughs> oh, this show. Sucks. I like how. I like how the what utensil would you be is the normal part of that conversation. Yeah. Like, that's a totally fine question. It's the answer that's you. No, no, no. The answer was perfect. I don't yeah. think I've ever heard a, Spot on. I don't think I've ever heard a more perfect answer at a time from somebody. You should have seen his performance last night, Ian. I don't know if you got to see it. Uh, Mad Mel last night had a five-hour performance uh -huh. that was remarkable, Rap. Remarkable. I will have to. I, I, I T voted it and I'll have to go back. Oh, uh, shut up. Yeah, you fucking shut asshole. Up, All right. Uh, last question here from the lovely Darius Butler. This one's a big topic that didn't get enough conversation. Yeah, we'll stick with the quarterbacks. Lamar Jackson, obviously, his deal came together. Would have been the biggest news if it wasn't draft night. Um, how did that come together? How quickly? And uh, is there any momentum with the next guy, Burrow, Herbert, Tua? What? Uh, okay. So this one, as soon as Jalen Hurts got done, um, the word was that the Ravens were going to basically take that deal. It's like the deal that they offered Lamar in, which we obviously talked about, was basically better, almost as good as Jalen Hurts' deal in some places, but better in others. So the Ravens were like, all right, this is sets the market pretty good. We are going to take this deal, and we're going to offer Lamar a better deal in all metrics and basically give him an offer that he can't refuse and really hope he takes it. So I thought this was going to happen after the draft. So I was kind of ready for it, but like not yesterday. I was knew it was coming eventually. And then yesterday, all these rumors started flying, and it was like something good is going to happen to Baltimore. I was like, oh my God, I think Lamar's getting done. And then it was like a mad scramble, and he did get done. He deserves every penny of it. It is $52 million a year, $185 million in total guarantees. And he's the highest paid quarterback in the NFL, like he should be. And we are now going to have to find a new topic to talk about, which is really just amazing in itself. Well, is it Herbert or Bur Burrow to, to the follow-up? Who do you think? Um, you know, I mean, I think it's going to be a race to see who goes last because the last will probably make the most. Um, but, but you know, we had Burrow two should clearly make the most there, right? Yeah, for sure. Bar none. Uh, knowing his agent, he probably will wait to be the last. So that, I think that's probably a pretty good assumption. But also um, with the way since he's going to have to structure that, how is there a max on how long the deal can be? Hockey has like a 10-year max. The NFL gave – Patrick Mahomes got a 10-year deal. Can they give like a 15-year deal so they can kick all this shit down the road and say, we'll guarantee you $750 million yeah. over the next 15 years so the business side of it can get figured out? Well, you can only prorate a signing bonus five years. So, like, even if you, you know, even if you do like a ten-year deal, which he would never accept, but even if you do a ten-year deal, 
accounting wise, it only kind of matters for the first five, just as far as spreading out the signing bonus. So it has to start on year six. Is that why Patrick Mahomes deal has been able to be so salary cap friendly for these first couple of years? And who was that? You really lit up. Was that? O? no, it was just a, you know, sit with some fans out there and trying to want to be nice to the people. <laughs> I'm like, so lining up shush that guy the other day. So or? yeah, you told yeah. a player. It's ridiculous. Shh. Shut up. Shut, shut, shut. <laughs> Shut your hey, face. by the way, did the did the plants look good last night? Yeah, they did. We didn't really see them. But then you actually went like this. You were like, can you do this with your hand to shush somebody? No, you can't because the calluses on there are too big. That means you can't talk around me, okay? <laughs> Is that what you did, Ian? That's what you did. That was that was disgusting. Oh, yeah, it was. Brutal. It was absolutely disgusting what you did. Anyway, so the proration of the signing bonus can only go five years because, like, yeah. Jalen Hurts' deal, very salary cap friendly. Yep. Patrick Mahomes' deal, very salary cap friendly. Patrick Mahomes signed that's, a 10-year deal, so that thing's just kicked down the road, and then they'll have to renegotiate that at six years and redo the whole yeah. thing. Yeah, and and I would say, you know, they're I don't I don't know about team friendly because there's a lot of players to like there too, but the team can build around them because they, there's a lot of guarantees, but there's not a lot of early cash flow. And I think that's why the Chiefs are able to build around Mahomes so well. And yeah, I would expect them to take a look at his contract as well. You know, because the other guys are making so much. I mean, I think Kansas City even realizes, like, we got to probably, probably got to fix this. So I would expect that to happen this offseason. All right. We appreciate the hell out of you, Rap. Good luck out there. Are you on TV today or no? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm uh, I'm on TV in the afternoon, and then it's me and Schrager hanging out for the second and third round. Mm. Oh, tone, tone, tone. How'd the mock drafts go? Daniel Jeremiah came in first. Outright clear winner of last night. Charles Davis. I Opening believe, right. I believe it was, it was uh, DJ. McShay, then Chuck Davis, and then Kuiper, and I can't remember who the other was, and then Mitt. And Schrager? Oh, Schrager was the other one. Schrager came in fifth out of a six-horse race. You know Horson. I'll have to bring that up tonight. I'm sure he'll be real happy to. Yeah, he won last that. year, though. He, he won last year. He yeah. was the best last year. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So this year, Daniel Jeremiah oh. just. Him and Kuiper were T4. Okay, so then. he was tied second to last, and then our guy was dead last for the uh -huh. second year in a row. He's getting better, though. Yeah. More points this year. Okay. That's what we're talking about. Anyways, tell Shregs we said congrats on a win last year. And tell Daniel Jeremiah that we know he's talking directly to Casario. Yep. So whenever <laughs> we hear him say anything about anything, we know the words are coming directly out of the building. Because what a thing to piece together on a mock draft. And then for it to happen, he almost stole the thunder of it. But then immediately we go, this is amazing out of that whole thing. He was unbelievable. Nice. We and actually like as it happened, so I do the report, trade, and they literally go to the desk, and it's everyone just looking at Daniel Jeremiah with him being. Like, <laughs> Hold on, what did his so, ass say? I texted him this morning. I texted him this morning, and I said, uh, I sent the eyeball emojis, okay, <laughs> and then he said, "What's up, dude? Can't believe it actually happened." <laughs> and then I go. You won the mock draft thing by a wide margin. He And he does blind squirrel following the nut every once in a while. <laughs> yeah, it's all bullshit. Move he the sticks. Yeah, we know. Congrats to all of you. You've done fantastic. We'll watch you all weekend. Hey, get back home sometime. Maybe take a nap. Stop boozing. So, have you been boozing pretty heavy out there? Uh, There's only so much time to booze. I got to work most of it, unfortunately. So, like, after we'll, we'll last night, after last night yeah. you guys go to hotel bar, have a drink, go to bed? Tonight, hopefully, I'll be sitting here watching Molly Crew, maybe having a drink. We'll see what happens. Uh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Ian Rappaport. Yay, hey, Rajin! Yeah, so Jeremiah has the end with the Texans. Anything he says about them, we should take yeah. as gospel from this point forward. Yep. Ridiculous. Hey, jot that down, AJ. It's right here. Got it. Who else? We always say that once somebody breaks news about somebody, we need to just listen to them forever about said thing. Rossini in the Saints, maybe? Believe Cardinals? so. Oh, Jets. She had the JJ Titans. Watt. Titans. 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 She had the uh, Julio. Was that Julio or what was yeah. it? Oh yeah, she was on the field for Julio that first practice, I believe. So she like people have like their yeah. Boom, bang. Josina in Cleveland. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yes. Ian, not so much in Seattle, I don't think.
Glazer everywhere. Sal Capaccio and Buffalo. Everyone knows yeah. Schultz has Seattle on lock. Yeah, we do know that. Yeah. Everybody would think that I have the Colts on lock, but that is not the case. They don't tell me anything. Ballard almost alluded to that yesterday about not texting me back when I was sending him my ideas mm -hmm. for what our team should do. Happy he took Anthony Richardson. Now I'm hearing there's breaking news out of Jim Irsay's Twitter account. Colts fans, <laughs> would you take Will Levis at number two if you're on the board for Colts in four hours from now and go Montana young for franchise? Smart. Yes. I think All right, delete that tweet, Jim. Jim, go on, wait, Jim. Wait, what? Go, go on, on, Jim. Would you take Will Levis at number two if you're on the board for the Colts in four hours from now and go Montana Young for franchise? Go on, Jimmy. I think I should do it. <laughs> Delete go, the tweet, what, Jim. Go, go get it, what Jimmy. What does that mean exactly? So this is time for another segment of what? Is Jim Sir saying? So I believe Jim Irsay has caught a lot of flack from maybe some Colts fans who thought Will Levis was going to be the Colts uh, quarterback. Remember Kentucky right down yonder uh -huh. from yeah. where Indiana is, Close. where he played his college ball. Potential a lot of Colts and Cats fans kind of coming together. Also, having to learn about Will Levis over the last few weeks, we found ourselves buying in. Okay, if this guy becomes the Colts quarterback, I'll be cool with it. So instead, we take Anthony Richardson. I personally very pumped about Jubilation. that. Some Colts fans might not have been pumped about that because they thought they were going to get Will Levis. Is this Jim Mercy saying, how about this? You want us to take him tonight? Because he's still available. <laughs> yeah. is, is that what Jim oh, is, er, what is saying here? Or is he uh, confusing a situation between <laughs> Montana and Young when they came in two different times? I, I believe it's the second part since he referenced them. If he would have left out the Montana and Young part, I would have I would have bought what you're trying to do for Jim uh, well, well, I'm not trying to do it. It's just how yeah, I read it. He could have went RG triple sticks and uh, Kirk, Kirk, Kirk. Yeah, that's that what I been, thought. But that, I mean, you don't want to. That would have been the same draft, at least. Exactly. Listen, this guy's been in the NFL his whole life. So right. He knows. So the Montana Young comparison is an accurate one. Jim, you won last night. Let's just move on. I think you guys should do this. I think it's a good I don't idea. 100%. Do it. You heard We got Gardner Minshew. We don't need do another exactly quarterback. Right. You heard on the That ain't going to play. SAT scale, Anthony Richardson should be a wide receiver. So. We don't have any weapons, so maybe we did just take a wide out at four. I really, Go really like Levis. this idea. They said uh, Richardson might need some time, so maybe bring in Levis to start. Let Smart. Richardson sit behind him and learn for a couple years. That'd yes. be perfect. Idea. Two championships in the next See, two but years. what is – the guy know. who paid you to know. play football for a long time tweeting right here. I don't know. Maybe he's trying to uh, get some people to trade up. Maybe he's trying to make that pick. Hey, we might take Levis here. If oh. you want to jump up here and take this. No, no. You know, he, look, Ursa's thinking 10 steps. A good amount of No, he This quotes. guy's playing chess. <laughs> you checkers bums. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. Thank you, Darius, for pointing that out. I should have seen this as soon as I read it. Everybody's talking about taking – Number 32 overall. Nope. Oh, the Steelers fan lines are blown up. Oh, is that right? Oh, is that right? What if we were to take this guy, huh? That's mm -hmm. right. You, you don't want us to do that? No. We already got enough quarterbacks, <laughs> mm -hmm. okay, My on our roster young. currently. But you need them, and you can come get them. This is Jim just driving up a little bit of conversation. Hey, let's do some business. Sure. Let's talk a little bit. We got who we wanted. You guys get who you want. We get the fuck out of here, just like Montana Young back in the day. Those businessmen, they do what they want. They get good stuff for everybody, and they're off and running. The football emoji is kind of confusing because sure. that makes you think it's about actually football. Right. This is about business. The business <laughs> Thank you, Darius. And the business is Thank football. Thank you, Darius. Yeah. You should have put cash tags he should have. right through that entire thing. Right. That's, all, that's his only mistake. He's fucking old. He meant to put dollar signs. Exactly. Oh, is that right? He accidentally put the football because in his recently used yeah. thing, it's the football it's the cash shot oh. because he's an owner of the NFL, pal. Right. See, I took the three footballs as the three wins they'll have this year with Levis at the helm. Oh, and what right. he's thinking, but hold on, hold on, hear me out. What he's thinking is Richardson gets the year, Levis gets this year, and guess who they get in the draft next year at the number three overall pick? Who's that? Marvin Harrison Jr. There you and go. You partner him with Anthony Richardson and Jonathan Taylor, who at that time probably is saying, get me the fuck out of this place. I hate it here. So maybe you draft the He was starting back. to say it a little bit last year. Exactly. Yeah. But you partner those he guys. Not happy. Is that the Jerry Rice? Marvin Harrison's yeah. Jerry Rice? Bingo. Oh, okay. It's Bingo. And T.O. See, they don't give enough Same characters. Draft. Now, I do think Jim could – AJ, the fuck was oh you stop fucking sweeping up your ass. My mute too. didn't work very well, sir. I feel like this is an inside joke that I don't know anything about, so I'm just trying to vacuum up some ashes. It's right here. This <laughs> is what are you talking about? It just He's happens. Housekeeping. 
Tweets do a good like numbers. I don't know. There's something you're leaving me out. Like I'm in the dark. <laughs> no, we are right where you were. I don't we, understand what's happening. We don't understand we don't this at all either. We're trying okay. to just make the most of it. Okay. We apologize. You're feeling lonely over there in that attic. No, yeah. not at all. I'm just trying to figure it out. Could we click we on the quote tweets I because I am it. so fascinated? Anything that has so. 128 retweets, 628 quotes. <laughs> <tweets, laughs> that's us. You certainly have to know. I triple dog dare you. Says Kyle George. Go up to Kyle George real quick. Go ahead and click on him. Bears fan. Okay, Chicago. All right, hey, no Colts football. fans are going to be. It's five o'clock somewhere. Everybody's saying he's boozing. Nick what? Ballis, uh, old fella has lost his mind. Possible. Okay, says thick as rook. All right, are you drinking again, James? <laughs> I don't think drinking was his thing, but a lot of people saying he's potentially under the influence here. Uh, trying to imagine how we tweeting this before they selected Jalen Hurts. Boom. All right, there's an Eagles fan. Oh, Rich, Rich Eisen. Rich Eisen likes it. Is that the real Rich Eisen? That's yeah. his show. Yeah. Yeah. He likes it too. Good sign. Jim just throwing him off the scent. Smart move. Jeez. A lot, lot of people. Just Reese Hoskins. Right. All right. Let's, let's get out of the place. That's I don't know if you're quick Hoskins. on that. <laughs> let's get out of the place. Come on. I caught the last one. Jesus. <laughs> Jeez. Jim has his demons. Sue him. Yeah, yeah, we all we do. All do. Everybody does. I do love how he's just diving head in like some mud. He's just talking shit here. He just yeah. wants to get in there. Why? Well, uh, brother, send Stirring it, it up. I love this. His, More owners his do haircut this. is awesome. I want to go viral. He's week, got bro. brand new hairdo. It yeah. looks awesome. He What's was in a movie week? last week. What yeah. do you want from this guy? Well, and you see what Slim. he used to make his hair that color, too. He put like 50 Cheetos in a bowl and used a microwave, melted them down, and then just scooped it up and ran it through his hair for about an hour. And now it looks awesome. That was on the post? How'd you know that? Yeah, that was part of it. Below, it was like explanation how to get your hair like this. <laughs> It's sick. I'm thinking about doing it myself. I think there's a little bit of spicy Doritos in there as well. I love the new style. Were they flaming hot? Or hey, Jim. So. Jim. Jim. Keep living, Jim. You do you, Jim. Keep going, we love Jim. you, Jim. And Kaylin, keep kicking ass in there, too. There's Hambone in the back. What? Some yes, guy sir. with a ponytail there, it appears. <laughs> He's doing good stuff. Hambone. We appreciate everybody. Jim, you look fucking cool, dude. Okay? Yes, love he you. does. Yeah. Great work last night. I don't know what this tweet's all about, though. Honestly, no hey, Jim, let's go ahead and alert. You can delete tweets. You can edit them. Yeah. Do all those things. Two's better than one. We got Anthony Richardson. We'll let everybody come all full circle on this guy because there's probably going to be a statue of him someday, 15, 20 years. Or maybe he's thinking, hey, first year head coach, let's bring in a guy who's so fucking intense, no one can take it, and we'll <laughs> flip this whole building upside down. Yeah. We don't know if that's real. That was Rappaport's reporting. Let's yeah. go to the phones uh, to wrap up this glorious How's field. How's that whale? Lolita, I believe, <laughs> thriving. What? It's alive. It's alive. Lolita's al yeah, alive. Nice. Thriving. Living very well out in the uh, Atlantic Ocean. Love that. What'd you say? Is that the one that got released from captivity after yeah. like 50 years? Jim, Jim, Jim Irsay oh. paid for it to release. Oh, it's doing mm -hmm. well. Yeah, definitely not dead. Yeah, I bought the app just like you could follow uh, Santa Claus, like Santa Tracker on on uh, Christmas Eve. I bought the app yeah. for the whale. It's doing fucking great. Lolita's oh. joined a uh, crew. Yeah. 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 Got a squad. A pod. Right. Yeah, a pod. Got a pod. They're, really? they're heading nice. down to South Africa right now. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. for sure. They're making cool. their way across the Atlantic. Yeah, yeah. that whale's alive. Definitely. There's there it is. That picture was taken yesterday. There's Lolita. <laughs> Live. Oh. For those that don't know who we're talking about, uh, there's a whale down in Miami who's been in captivity for like ever. Yeah, like 50 plus years. And uh, Jim Mercer helped free. He did. Thank you. That yeah. whale. Yep. you, Jim. Lolita wanted out of there. I, I don't know what Lolita was saying or doing to indicate that she needed out of captivity. What if she was just fucking full speed right into the glass head first? Boom. I don't doubt And then it. concussed down to the bottom. Mm -hmm. Got to breathe. Back to the other side. That's what Willie was doing. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> just for like two months straight. Holy fuck. Seems like Lolita wants out of here. Yeah. Jim's like, I got you. Yep. Here's $20 million. Mm -hmm. And Lolita was able to survive and thrive out there in the wild. In I the hope. ocean after Thank not you, being Mr. there for 30 years, 40 years. Yeah, she's alive and well, I'm, uh, I'm sure of it. You're yeah. down there in South Florida. You got eyes yep. on Lolita? Nah, absolutely not. Stay well, away from that. What do you think Lolita's doing right now? Uh, I mean, she's probably been eating and shit out already. Oh, <laughs> yeah? yeah? What is your problem? What do you mean? No, actually, Chapter 50 years. No, actually, yesterday I saw videos. Uh, she tipped over a, a refugee boat and fucking ate a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> See, that would what? make more sense for Lolita. Come on. <laughs> Hell yeah. She probably has more than a few gripes with humans, if I had to guess. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> she ain't eating seals. She's eating people. Yeah. 
Let's go to the phones. Tillicum. Bingo. Powder? I mean, what if Jim messed up and put her put this <laughs> whale in a freshwater lake? <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah. If they're a pack, go check it out. Yeah. yeah. A lot of gators. Lake down there. Monroe, are you kidding me? Let's go to the phones. All right. We hope we know Lolita's living. She's great. And yeah. she loves humans. Yeah. Well. You, Jim Ursay, <laughs> let her out. Okay. She so, loves Jim. She I mean, he, Lolita probably killed twelve to fifteen people at SeaWorld. <laughs> <laughs> That's part of the reason they had to hey, this. Hey, that thing. blackfish thing really changed how a lot of people started viewing uh Oh yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Movie. I that is got rid of SeaWorld. That is burned it? in my brain seeing that fucking Mm -hmm. Killer whale grab that worker and slam their head off the, that enclosure and kill them instantly. I was like, oh, yeah, maybe these things don't love being inside. So yeah. smart, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so smart. And it's like, that was a tough dock for the entire yeah. Yeah. animal safari. Changed everything, zoo. right? Aren't they? Yeah. Aren't that all? Isn't that all like SeaWorld orca shows are gone, right? They're phasing them all out. The dolphins, I think, are next, because you see those fuckers. They are so smart. Yeah, they're oh, yeah. too smart. You, they are so, so smart. They, I, masturbating the whole time. They do crank they it. Do. Let's they do. They, they, they like rape. They rape each other. They yeah. throw in whoa, bath, whoa, whoa. Yeah, it's bath. True. It's true. true. Let's go to the phones. Okay. They're very uh, dangerous. Guys, can we not have wow. one dorsal <laughs> fin conversation? Yeah, okay. Jesus. Without you guys bringing up what dolphins do whenever there's a Photo op situation <laughs> yeah, crazy. every single time, pretty much, at least once in the group that's taking the photo with the Dolphins. Of course, the Dolphins are going to come up and give you a high five, uh -huh. okay? Of course, you're going to be able to ride on back. Mm -hmm. But every once in a while, somebody in your group is going to get one of those right on the back. Yeah, exactly. Ooh, and it's going. Doing business. And that's oh, just what? dolphin lifestyle. Yeah. So the dolphin. That is not a dolphin. Just want to let everybody Where? know. No. No. That is not a dolphin. That's Damn. Where are they? What are they on? I believe that's, uh, that's Lolita Spa Day. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if they look Jim... at their, are they in the ocean? No. No, that's it. No. Yeah, that's the ocean. What, what, are you, what do you think? What's the background? Okay. Is that a wall? What's the background? Yeah. yeah is that a wall? Is that an aquarium? It's the tank when they, and they come up and they Oh, go now I the... see the tank. Mm -hmm. Now that you zoomed in, I can see the bars. I couldn't see the bars. Or... If Jim all right, has hey, any... All right. Hey, happy you there. smile. No, that's, that's another thing. Like, that is, is that a smile or not? Yeah. That's How good. do we know what an animal smile is? The, the, oh, the, the face that that animal's making, mammal. I They've never right. smiled. They've never smiled in that tiny tank. You know, yeah, that. look at the know. size of that tongue. Imagine what that thing could do. Well, they rub it too, right? Don't they have to rub the yeah. tongue, yeah. suck the tongue. Yep. Like, Put you imagine what the, on there. You imagine the Dalai Lama seeing that thing? <laughs> suck <laughs> my tongue. Well, <laughs> it's got a fence. Jim had any gut sack, he'd fucking. Saw this thing in half and Whoa. wore his headdress out to the first game season opener. <laughs> at the Colts. You know how fucking cool that would be, Jim, with a You're guitar. A You're a pig. His eyes looking through the eyes of a killer whale. <laughs> Come on, that is a killer mentality. I would think about switching. What are you bullying fans. the bully, huh? Is that what you say you got to do here? Lolita's living a great life. What's the life expectancy of these things? Do we yeah, know? Seventy-five years or so. Yeah, in in captivity or in the wild? Probably in the wild. Captivity is like one. Captivity is much less because once they kill a fucking sixteen-year-old person who's making minimum wage, just trying to get a couple bucks to you know get McDonald's <laughs> over the summer. Yeah, cool. yeah the, guess what? They're taking a shotgun out there and fucking riddling that thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, show. so you were wrong. Male killer whales is about oh, thirty right, right years, but they can live up to at least sixty years. Female typically live about fifty years, but can live up past. Oh, you were one hundred percent right. Ninety years in the wild. Females reach sexual maturity when they're between ten and thirteen years old. So the lead is way past that. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. She is past her prime. She's going out into the ocean. Past her prime. She's living until she's ninety. Yeah. She's good. She's got another forty no. great no, that, years. That Roger doesn't. That doesn't late. say what Menopause it's like. Or or transition from uh, mm -hmm. captive to wild. Hey, Lolita, we're pulling for you. Good luck, yeah, Lolita. Good luck, Lolita. You're gonna let's need go, it. Let's go to the fronts. Uh, let's go to Bob in Ohio. Can't wait to hear this Ohioan on this glorious feel good Friday. Bob, what's going on? Same one. Yo. Yo. I want to know why the two stooges in the front row are always fucking with the Ohio legend, A.J. Hawk. Hey, Bob, I fucking love you, Bob. Where are you from? What part of Ohio? Parma. Parma? Yeah, right outside Cleveland. Oh, hell yeah. All right, Bob, we appreciate your service to Ohio. And your Ohio champion appreciates and respects you calling in. Questioning two people that think they can pop off to the Ohio champion. You're disrespecting an entire state whenever you say something about this man right here, Connor. Do that, you know that? That's what Parma Bob. That was not that was not directed towards me and Ty. 
There is no way he is saying that we disrespect AJ. We never do. I wore his fucking jersey last night as an homage to the player and man, AJ Hawkins. Yeah, Bob, when you fucking sign AJ's game checks, then maybe you can fucking come back and talk to me. I've done that for I don't know how many years. How many years were you an owner of, of the team while AJ was playing? Uh, let's see. That was gifted to me when I graduated from high school, so probably only like three or four. Still his employer. Has Bob ever done that? I don't think so. Mm-mm, no. Suck it, Bob. Let's go to Steven in Michigan on the Five Energy <laughs> phone line. What's going on, Steven? Matt, the boys, how we doing? Keep, Keep it moving. moving. Hell yeah. Hell uh, yeah. So, uh, Steven's big high. time, I've been a long time Lions fan my whole life. Um, <laughs> but, hey. That, hey, was, hey. that wasn't the call. You know, I had Sorry, to go and, uh, Steve. I used to be a Browns fan. Jesus. But after they did <laughs> Baker wrong, you do Baker wrong, I had to move on. That's you. And uh, that's I said, whoever Richardson goes to, that's what got you off. That, that, that's my new. Uh, that's my new team. Please so don't. I'm a nice. Colts fan now, boys. Yeah! Yeah! Hey! 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 Sweet. Congrats. Congrats. Congrats! You got the Congrats. worst fan in the history of the NFL. <laughs> you want to watch the game on a, oh, on yeah. a ground level suite? Send him your number. He changed. He became a fan literally right before Jim's tweet. He's a fan. That's what happened. Wow, that's true. Steven, good call, we need Bob. That energy in the stadium. The Browns to the Lions. To the Colts. To the Colts. So Jeez if, Louise, this guy has God, zero man. happiness in, the, in his NFL fandom. And when he left the Browns, they probably went to the playoffs. And mm-hmm. when he left the Lions, they are probably going to go to the playoffs this year. Yeah. Oh, great. So at least we know that Steven got here. There is a sunrise on the horizon. Yeah. That's right. We are currently in the darkness, but the light will be found. Richard Oh, hey, Aaron's pissed about the Jets pick. Is he? What do you mean? Oh, should he be mad was the question that was being asked this morning on oh. television. Yep. Yeah. What did, he, what did he have? He needed a receiver? He wanted, like, Jackson Smith and yeah. Jigba or something? Well, he was available at the time. Nobody mm-hmm. expected him to be available. Instead, they Uh-oh. took a linebacker from, from Iowa, Iowa State. State, Will McDonald the fourth. Yeah. Great name. And uh, – Willie Mack. Has it but it was a compliment to him, though. It was a compliment to Aaron saying, hey, we expect to be playing with a bunch of leads, so we want a bunch of guys in the arsenal to rush the passer. Bingo. Hell, yeah. So you think the people that were asking that question also didn't know that – like maybe Bob and Joe have Aaron as a part of like the hmm. brain trust conversations what? about what's going I on. Think, no. I think that question trying to stir something up a little bit, maybe. No, yeah. you don't Possibly. know. No, I do believe there's a chance though that Aaron is part. Like, I don't want to take a shot at anybody. I'm not going to. Okay. This is not a shot. Sure. Yeah. It's not a shot. Yeah. Mark Murphy didn't grow up. An Aaron Rodgers fan. No. Okay. Joe Douglas yeah. could have potentially. Oh, yeah. Like at times. Sala could have potentially, you know, the ages, just naturally the ages that they are. For sure. Like, yeah. hey, the way they view and think of Aaron Rodgers and his ability could be different than how other buildings could experience it. And I wonder what that would be like for Aaron if immediately he walks into two people that are like, bro. When you were doing this, why were you doing this? When you think about this, what do you think about? When you think about a wide receiver, what do you think? Like, they want to learn potentially from a guy that they've kind of seen Mm -hmm. and been a fan of for a long time, as opposed to like almost a, hey, you work for us standpoint. That's a, that's probably an interesting vibe to kind of, I wish I was a fly on the wall almost, if that's happening. Do you know if that's happening? And do you think that was maybe a part of the entire thing when they spent 11 hours in Malibu together and got to learn each other and why you wanted to go there so bad? Yeah. I mean, I don't, you think like, whether people admit it or not, like everybody wants to be wanted, right? Like so, with the fact that all these players and the the coaching staff and all of them, then I would imagine he sits down with them, and from everything he says, like these guys were were humans. They're normal humans that he could talk to, not only about football but everything else. So I'm sure it's a great like. Uh, sometimes it's just a change of scenery, man, for everybody, different perspective. Yeah, different way of doing things too. You're starting something anew, mm-hmm. so you can change the you can use the information that you have from the past. Mm-hmm. And you can redo however you want to do it. Nice, fresh start. How many times did Joe Douglas go, so you there's no light in it? <laughs> you know? said, so how did you, how did you see the toilet? How did that so did you wear diapers? And then Aaron went, that's what AJ asked me to. Oh, love AJ. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, going to say, and Joe's going to say, but yeah, you still have not answered the question. So No, he said he didn't, right? He said yeah. it was three yeah. wipes. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Where's the footage? Right. Did they film it? Mm-hmm. Somebody had to have, right, which was another point that you had, like, so you being surveyed here? Who's watching the... Mm-hmm. I've watched him sweep 
for listening devices and hidden cameras. So, yes, I know he's very well paranoid. Put that on the ticker. <laughs> AJ has seen mm -hmm. Aaron Rodgers sweep premises. Smart. Yeah. That's a weird-looking fire thing, isn't it? What the hell? Open it up. Thought so. What if he gets one? Gotcha, bitch. Yep, yeah. What is he, has he ever? How does that work? I've never, seen, I've never seen him come across a device that somebody had planted somewhere where he is staying. But I would love to be there if he did come across something. Yeah, every yeah. once in a while, you know, you're in like an Airbnb or somewhere, and you're like taking a shit or something, and it's like, this is interesting. Do you think they're? And you start looking around. I, the room. Mm -hmm. I assume. I assume they're. Yeah. And you try to find it or whatever, and you see like one little thing on the wall where it's like that seems abnormal. Yeah. If it's not a camera, why is that like that? Mm -hmm. Somebody had to do this thing and just be like, yep, that looks like everything else. It does not. And then you get up closer and it's just literally just a fuck up in the painting. And it's like, okay, so not a camera. All right, let's move on. Know. But everybody has that thought. I do like the fact that, yeah, Aaron does seem like a guy that would be like, <laughs> all right, whole place. Yeah, you got to watch detector. out for toilet cams. Yeah, Toilet cams? Ooh, Shooting up the thing? They do top and bottom nowadays. Do they yeah. get dumps? Don't they get turds on them? Oh, yeah. What are you getting out of there? You're just getting what Tone's seeing when he looks down yeah. at the mirror he's uh, straddling? That guy's asshole is oh. very clean. I didn't expect that today. Five stars. Dude, my butthole shows up. They're going to be pissed that they put that camera down yeah, here. Bold yeah. move. Because when I'm in there, we are going to battle. That's right. It is me versus that water. It's not friendly. And it's going to fight back whenever I splash this mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. So what are they filming, AJ? What are they? Who? These are some weird people out there. I mean, people that that love probably getting dumped on i'm guessing right there's people that oh, enjoy that stuff which hammock let's go to the phones yep smoosh it through you know your uncle smoosh it right through to him right somehow i'm not related we have the same last name we're not related yeah i mean at some point and it may be like three or four removed yeah down there county cork in ireland probably you know somewhere around there the mcafees were actually booted from scotland because we we're badasses mm -hmm. And then oh. we went over to Ireland, County Cork, I do believe. And then I don't know who made the, for me, I don't know who made the the voyage the voyage over to America or whatever. But I believe immediately upon arrival, right into, hey, welcome to, you got a fight. Oh, great. Let's do it. Yeah, great. American dream. Can't wait. Look, what are we doing? Oh, you're going to war, I think, immediately. Okay, sweet. Okay. So with that being said, John McAfee went a different route. His family. I don't know what they did. They just got real smart and then started a war with everybody. Yeah. Ooh. So much money. Yeah. Ooh. He Too was in much. every computer, yes. every single computer. Do it. Yeah. Antivirus do it. Yeah. I still get people, whenever they learn of me, they go, who's that guy doing, fighting viruses? It's like, all right, bro. Everybody uses an apple. They're virus proof. Yeah. But yes, similar <laughs> pronunciation. If that is how this is going to go. <laughs> he was everywhere. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And those viruses, whew, real back deep. Back in like lime wire days, oh, yeah. Yeah. Trojan you know? horses oh, left man. and right. They came out of nowhere too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, you just ruined everything in your house. <laughs> Whoa. It's okay. And then John McAfee was riding in on a technology horse. Mm -hmm. We will fight everything off for you. All you got to do is just pay us. What do you do? Nobody understood technology. Nope. Though. No. Didn't he openly say in the doc that he was spying on everybody with the software? He could. Yeah. yeah. He said he oh, could. He could. Okay. Pretty much. I don't know if he said he did. That's a lot of humans I think he would be spying on, which goes back to the point of, like, the people that think they're always being watched, which I, th I assume we are. Who's watching all the footage and taking it all in yeah. and documenting yeah. it all it's like that thing and filing it, just, it? It's just stored until they need it, until they need to dial it up. Chat Probably. GPT. Boom. Dude, AI Drake. Yeah. So good. Winter storm. Hey, AI right. Drake. Winter's cold. Who's getting paid on that? Anyone getting paid on that? No. Nope. Well, that's the thing, yeah. That's going to become big money. AI. Yeah, Drake just needs to hire it and then just call it a career because AI Drake don't miss. AI Drake makes bangers. Yeah. A mm -hmm. AI, fake Drake makes bangers. For those that don't know what we're talking about, AI, artificial intelligence, I do believe is the... Yep. yep. Artificial intelligence are these algorithms and shit that we've dealt with for a long time without even knowing that we're dealing with it. The suggestions, the smartphones, the you need this. It starts reading your tendencies, and then it's able to just kind of put things in front of your face and say, hey, you need it. That has evolved now. The AI has evolved. And all these nerds have been telling us that the AI is going to involve, or evolve, and it's going to become a problem for all of us. Now they've gone into the mimic world, where AI can take 
all the shit that you've ever done publicly, mm-hmm. kind of piece it together and figure out who you are, what you are. There was something called Dudesy, an AI podcast with uh, Will Sasso and Friend, and it made an entire hour-long stand-up special using Tom Brady's exact voice while going through all of his speeches and the response to the things that he said, what gets the best responses, what gets the worst responses, and made an hour-long stand-up special, yep. and it's a banger. Yeah, unbelievable. So good. Because it knows exactly what people are going to respond well to because it's already been tried and proven. That's literally how it was built. AI Drake is the new one. Mm-hmm. Making the beats... Okay, we know this type of beat, this sound is good for uh, what people like and uh-huh. respond to because we've done all the research here on our end analytically. This gets a uh, big number. This, get, this gets big number. What do these two things have in common? Boom, let's put those two things together. Make the best beat out. Then, what, re- what do people like about Drake? We can search all the Google searches yep. for what people mm-hmm. like about Drake, what they say about Drake, what they enjoy, what they don't enjoy, and then bang, bars. On the best beat, you get the best Drake, pretty much. Yes. Yeah. On the best beat possible. And it has been banger city from this fucking AI Drake. <laughs> it is remarkable. And I know Drake has to know about this. Drake knows everything oh, yeah. Yeah. about his business. He's a great yeah. businessman. I'm excited to see what he does with AI Drake. They will be featured on a song. Yeah, yeah. they have to be. It will absolutely happen. And I do believe, I read this on uh, the internet last night, actually. They also generate the album images that the songs have come with, and those also are unbelievable. So the whole thing is just getting taken over by something behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. Tom Brady could be a stand-up comedian right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just have AI Tom make one. Don't let anybody else hear it. Memorize yeah. it. Yep. Go yeah. do it. Yeah. Arby's bits for days. That's what... Music could be right a collaborative effort that people don't really know about, but that does all the dirty work, gives you lyrics, mm. gives you the beat. Yeah, and don't fight it. Just so, like Drake, Drake will take AI Drake's first song. I assume he'll cut it off somewhere in a verse, mm-hmm. and he'll yep. say like, "All right, now my go," and then he'll throw it back to AI Drake. Yep. And then he'll come back, and then he'll be able to profit off of that. Yeah, yeah. because the first one got ripped off Spotify, unfortunately, because there's one before the one I showed you guys. You remember the album Ti versus Tip? Mm-hmm. It's going to be Drake yeah. versus AI Drake. Drake versus- that's going to be an album. That'd yeah. be sick. And he's going to take all the... Okay, and that's going to be his last album because remember, he's thinking about retiring. Bingo. Makes sense. Wow. Drake's going to make hundreds of millions of dollars off of this. Yeah. Don't fight the Way team. to go, Drake. Embrace Drake. it. Uh, one more phone call. Let's get the fuck out of here. 311 on this Feel Good Friday. Big time weekend draft night. Hey, how'd you sleep last night? I was up, dude. I was up. Took me a while. Yeah, I didn't fall asleep for a while. But mm-hmm. yeah. We like that after football games, too? Yeah, usually. I was always tired, and then all of a sudden it's time to go to bed, and you're not tired at all. Primetime games. Things at late night, like when I was doing those WWE shows, like Smackdowns on Friday oh, nights. That'd be really hard to get to sleep. Oh, I'd get home, and it's like I'm wide awake still. Yeah. Like yeah. I am. What are we talking about? The wife, obviously, ready to go to bed, but she hasn't just been yelling into a microphone for two hours with <laughs> 13,000 people around. It's like, uh, I wonder what that is. I think it's probably normal, though. Probably sensory drop-off or something, because even the Clippers game on uh, last week and Thursday, like being in those environments and then trying to just like go and completely shut off your brain is so hard to do. Yeah. Balmer's lit, too. Huh? Balmer. Balmer? Oh, my God. He was going through it. Because he obviously, he's got like the super nice uh, courtside seats that are bigger. And he was directly across from me. And he was, oh, jeez, the entire night. Toilets! Mm -hmm. He cares about everything. Going to a Clipper game is going to be a good time. Yeah. TV timeout. Forever. Mm -hmm. Rap performance. And the Clippers arena? Yeah. What is it, Crypto? Crypto, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like. There are new places right there by SoFi. Felt like the Jerry Buss vibe that he was trying to do uh, in that TV show on HBO. Yin Yang oh. Twins at halftime. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like these Smart. I have to Smart. figure out what the fuck you going to do with his yeah. team, though. Kawhi's always... Yeah. Whoa, 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 Come on. That's her. Jeez, uh, what do you want me to do? Break. Oh, sorry. Feel bad for him. Broke all his bones and his knees. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's had bad injuries. Feel bad for him, but... We have not seen him play basketball as a Clipper, though. I've seen him probably play six games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my eyes, these Maybe. eyes. Six great games. Yeah. So yeah, so good too. When he's out, it's like shit. This guy could be top five all time. But damn, Palmer's like he's- toilets. I spent this much money on toilets. They'll be here every night. I spent this much money on Kawhi. I haven't seen the guy play. What the <laughs> fuck? I haven't seen him play. 
Legit, though. That's they, been unfortunate. And they have to hold on to him, too. Because new arena coming in, you're not just not going to have two all-stars on your team. You need to have them. You don't think Bomber's going to pull a temper and just try to pay some ridiculous price for somebody to come in there and launch a new arena? Yeah, or just trade. Who's available? LeBron? Luka Garza. Lu- Luka Garza's available. Yes. Um, Luka Garza's available? Maybe. Yeah. No way. Yeah, I remember mm-hmm. we fucking pulled up his G League stats. Guy's fucking averaging 30 points and 15 rebounds and no NBA team. Mm-hmm. We'll give him a fucking shot. Yeah. Bullshit. 25 minutes. Tell me what that's all about. Yeah. Good question. I mean, Giannis could become. Is that Iowaism? It could be. could be. I don't like that that's happening. Could be also because his name's Luca Garza and not fucking Joe Smith. <laughs> What's that mean? Luka know. Doncic is all over the place. Well, they'll give him a shot. He can go to Iowa. <laughs> Let's go to the phones. That's true. Luca Garza is a free agent, and we would like to see him on an NBA team. Yeah, right now. <laughs> right now. Right now. <laughs> Do you hear that, AJ? Has, when was the last time he was on an NBA roster? I don't know if this he's year. ever been on one. Yeah, no. up and down all year. Yeah. They fucking, okay. he kills it in the G League. They bring him up. He plays four minutes, and they tell him, <laughs> hey, don't shoot the fucking ball. Don't even touch it. And then sit back down on the bench, and then they send him back down. And what he, about Mac McClung? Where's he at? Yeah. G League. I well. thought he was up with okay. the Sixers. No, he came back down. I think they won the G League championship, though. Oh, nice. Yeah, he could get called up, though. Hell yeah. Right now? And Embiid is hurt, yeah. Had a hell of a moment. Mm-hmm. A moment? No, he, this this yeah, is a moment. This is a start. He's, he's in five, ten years, this guy. Five, ten years, he is going to be the Stefan Marbury of China yeah. again. <laughs> he's going to take that fucking place over. Hell yeah. Last phone call. You want to go to Nevada, Seattle, New Jersey, Indianapolis, or D.C.? Wow. Mm. Say- Seattle. Any other votes? I was going to throw out Jersey. Nevada. Okay, so everybody sucks. So what is the... It was five phone calls. Andy. And would you like to say? DC. Okay. Okay. All right. One vote for all of them, obviously. You haven't voted. Yeah, that's the thing I was trying not to do. All right. You know what? You pushed me. I'll, I'll vote Seattle. Wow. Yep. I've been turned. Just like that. Yeah. Swing I, vote. I Boston thought, Connor. I thought yeah. a lot about Jersey. I don't like Jersey, so I don't <laughs> even know why I said it. <laughs> Let's go to River in Seattle. Hell Best yeah, name on yeah. the board. Yes. River, what's going on, pal? On the Come Five on. Energy phone line to wrap up this Feel Good Friday as we get into draft weekend here in the NFL season. How we doing? Keep it moving, boys. Hell yeah, River. Good start here already. Hey, I was out here on the sound earlier, and I saw a uh, there was a herd of, uh, it's not a herd, but there's a bunch of orcas, and one of them was wearing a, uh, a Gators jersey. I oh. think Lolita made her way back to Seattle. Oh. oh. We knew Lolita was a hell of a swimmer. She would have had to go through the Panama Canal. Yep. Yeah. To get over to where she, came, she came all the way back home. This Heavy is where traffic. they got her. So where are you right now? You're on a what? I'm in Puget Seattle. Sound? I'm looking at the Puget Sound right now. What is the Puget Sound? Uh, it's part of Seattle. It's uh, it's it's part of the Pacific Ocean. It's an inlet. So, like, if you look at Seattle, and there's kind of you've a seen tail it. If you played the there, Pat. You've seen it. it. It's Allegheny. He's no, it's not. Yeah, it's, it's right. It's right where the stadium is. It's beautiful. It's where they throw the fish. Oh, they're tossing yeah. fish down yeah. there. And you said there's orcas oh, out there. Is that like an everyday thing? Oh yeah, there's always orcas out here. This is uh, they they love they love the bay. What are you doing? What do you do for a living? You just smoke dope and stare at orcas uh, out there? Catches them, catches uh, them and sells no, them to Sea World. I'm a chef at one of the uh, one of the restaurants down here. Oh, no. chef, chef River, River. let's go. Ah. What are we cooking? We cooking fish, obviously. We a meat. Right. Oh, he- oh, oh, hell yeah! Oyster, we're shucking oysters. We're cooking tuna. We're right. cooking salmon. We're cooking it all. I love that. What's the name of the place you cook at? Uh, Hatback Bar and Grill. It's a uh, shout out to uh, Ken Griffey Jr. It's right across from the uh, Mariner Stadium. Oh, nice. Oh, oh, there's Lolita. There's Lolita. Lolita. You're right. You're right. Holy shit, River. Good eyes on <laughs> the uh, inlet there. We appreciate hey, you. Good I'm luck. watching out. Hey, appreciate you. River, great name. Good yeah. call. That was yeah. sweet. He works at a restaurant Ken Griffey started? Uh, right called? across from Safeco Field, sounds like. It says Hatback. Hatback. Yeah. Cool. Ken Griffey Jr., I think. Yep. So he's uh, the namesake. I do believe. Yep. That's cool. awesome. Hey, Chef River, do your thing, pal. Keep going, River. Let's get the hell out of here. What a week. Unbelievable. Great week. It was. Legendary week. Legendary. Last night was the biggest draft spectacular we've ever had, AJ. Really? Okay. Yep. Nice. It was fun, man. I had a good time. It was. It was. I mean. Ty. Yeah. Go ahead. Just everything. Everything ties. Yeah. Top to bottom ties. Flu game. Jordan flu game. As JJ Watt said. Yeah. It was. It was very entertaining from all fronts. I think. I concur. Um, 
We were in the trenches a little bit there with AQ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Learned some stuff about some guys. Yep. Some guys open our shoulder a little bit. Going to have to fix that. Skronsky also. Let's go yeah, ahead and, a new form. and rotate yeah. the stick. That's right. D Bud had comps on these guys. Oh, yeah. That was sweet. Yeah. Running film. Remember, he was in front of the film. Yep. Yeah. Doing the film. Yeah. A lot of people were tweeting, though. I seen some of these later as I was scrolling through at night when I couldn't pass out. Mm -hmm. it was, a lot of people were viewing it as a watch along with the draft, and we were 25 minutes ahead of the draft. So they said we were kind of ruining it. Oh, uh, boo -hoo. It ain't a watch along. It's a program. It's it's a draft spectacular. It's fucking different. It's so. stupid. I mark. I said it is a watch along though. I said, hey, as we watch along with the, uh, I kind of defined it as that. Yeah, I but it's like, the most stupendous watch along, which means it's not a watch. -along. But they need to fix that. Yeah, it's not on us. Like going forward, we were way too far ahead. There's literally nothing you can do. When we got the Bryce Young thing, like you can't just you can't sit on that for 25 minutes if we are. It's the internet. We're an thing. internet show, yeah. exactly. But like they got to figure that out on their end for sure. Yeah, they need to embrace it. Well, it's, the same, it's the same it deal. As long as possible. I know, but they, then they need to know that they're trying to stretch mm -hmm. it out as far they, as possible. They need, and they need to keep that shit tight. They need to specifically say like, okay, we understand that like coverage starts at eight. Like you need to first pick will be at the podium oh. at this time because yeah. people tune in at eight, assuming like, oh, okay, the card's gonna be in pretty quickly like it, it we we started at 7 45 and they didn't announce the first pick until like 8 25 do rogers bullshit earlier no we we're okay with all of that make it a thing make it a spectacle drag out the time like they did allegedly for the first and second like 10 minutes and everything keep the ratings i get it don't let it out yeah no phones in the war room that's what i'm saying like don't let it out like yeah. I, like people it's getting up. Schrager's like, don't do Twitter. It's like, well, why is Twitter no? Twitter, th don't let Twitter know. Yeah. Your billion dollar businesses, like, there is a way to keep it tight. And I think it would make the draft better. Fine teams. For sure. For everybody. Fine teams if it gets out. Big bingo. Ooh. Forfeit first round draft picks. Ooh. Like, whenever a guy tries to steal another quarterback Ooh. right off another team. Yeah. No, but legit, that's a real thing. They should focus on that and be like, hey, this shit does not get out. Cannot get out. Because. I mean, what are we supposed to do? We're staring at a tweet telling us exactly what's yeah. going to happen. I mean, what are we? I mean, this, is, this has turned into the second biggest day of the NFL calendar behind the Super Bowl. Keep like it, it tight. Legit has. Keep it tight, AJ. They keep the schedule they tight. Could. Like the schedule yeah. really exactly. Gets out. The yeah. WWE is able to keep things that they, and that's the reason why I think I think about it because I've been in WWE. It's like, hey, there is a way to keep shit tight. Yeah. The Cardinals and the um, uh, Ravens. Yeah. Kept the trade of Hollywood Brown yeah. and a plane trip tight. You can keep it tight. Just like, hey, let's let's, tighten it up. let's keep it tight. Yeah, let's do that. Let's keep it tight. You know what I mean, AJ? Let's, let's keep it a little tight. I think they tight. could definitely they could definitely get it done, but there would have to be some like real repercussions yeah. if it did get out. Keep it tight. Million dollars. With well, that being said, we don't want to do what we have to do, but we have to do what we have to do because it's right there, the knowledge in front of us. If we don't cover it, who are we? Mm -hmm. yep. Exactly. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Good. Gotta do well it. Said. Got us into some lawsuits. Yeah. Sorry. Exactly. <laughs> Crap, but it is crap. <laughs> allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly, allegedly crop. Allegedly crop. Allegedly crop. <laughs> when that start? Crop? Yeah. I believe that was the Iowa caller who was a crop pot. Yeah. Ben, crop. What's his name? Ben? Dan. 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 Daniel. Dan in Northwest <laughs> Iowa. He was a good caller. Crop pot. There's no way the leaves can go through the fucking animals. He's not him. from fucking Quebec, Tony, okay? Or Ontario. He's <laughs> I thought Northwestern Iowa. Iowa was close to Manitoba. I do appreciate Darius saying, so you, you're just not even from a city. You're just from a fucking <laughs> an area Region. of a state. <laughs> if you're from some fucking hayseed town, then yeah, you just say Northwest We like this Iowa. guy. What do you... Oh, I love him. I love him. I'm just saying, I'm not telling people I'm from fucking Northeast Iowa. Where are you from? I'm from fucking Waterloo, okay? Oh, we know that place. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, documentary. John Wayne Gacy ran one of the most profitable fucking KFCs, you know, this side <laughs> of the Mississippi River there. That is not what we remember. 40, 50 no, years I don't, ago. No, I don't recall that. No, you must be remembering when he moved to Des Plaines, Illinois, and killed all those fucking people. Not true. We caught him, though. The guy that's from yeah. Waterloo? He's not Waterloo from guy? Waterloo. He moved there. <laughs> sure. He's from <laughs> Illinois. He moved to Waterloo. That is a great picture. <laughs> That was him in Iowa, right? That was before he got really, the trophy or no? Really That's man of the year right there. He Hawk won the E.J. Hawk of Ohio Award of Iowa, oh, man. right? Just of Waterloo. Not of Iowa. Oh, just the city. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Just Waterloo, JC. <clears throat> if he stuck around a little bit longer, the whole state might Maybe. get Maybe. I mean, he built that allegedly. beautiful golf course at the fucking state penitentiary in Anamosa, so. Really? You know. Let's get to a break for <laughs> two to three days. 
We can't thank you enough. Shout out to Waterloo. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out to Northwest mm -hmm. Iowa. Shout, shout out. out. Shout, shout out to yep. Nevada, Seattle, DC, Indy, and Jersey. What? Those are all the callers that are left and all the other people that called in and have watched all week. Mm -hmm. We can't thank you enough. Debo, you want to do a giveaway? Let's do it. Oh. No, nah, we're giving away $50,000. Yeah. 100000 100000 $100,000, yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah, you're right. Next time you're in here, we'll do a giveaway. Let's do it. What would you do? Right put. No, I was going to say, don't even that. look at that. Bad. Hey, you guys should get a unit. You need to get a unicycle in there and start practicing. We will. No way. I seen him one last night. It's, it's not impossible. The tall one. You're no, chasing tall a ghost, a smaller AJ. One. Get a smaller one. She was so high in the sky. Mm -hmm. and, then and then she's dismounted. And if she falls Dismount sideways, if she falls sideways or back, there's no easy way to fall. No. Mm -hmm. And how about catching the fifth one? I watched the video back. She's leaning left to catch that thing. It's like, mm -hmm. bro, that unicycle. You see the. The one when she dropped, the one that she dropped, she starts to go for it, and then she pulls her hand back because, like, she could have made herself fall off when she oh. goes to grab. Like, that has to be another thing. Like, okay, how how far, like, outside of my frame can I go to try to, you know, grab one of these suckers? We Googled this, and we're not saying this. Her age is, is something that I don't think anybody would expect. No. no. And at that age, to fall from 10 and a half feet. Yeah, he's dead. In heels. Dead, yeah. Like, she might be able to adjust and, like, land, but, like, that's going to be a tough... It's all she wrote. You're going to be off balance. No. Yeah. Not what you're saying. It uh, is. I don't you know. Guys. She hasn't fall. What's what? that? A hundred times? I don't know if she ever did. Over... No. Not not doing a live fucking performance, but, like, training in and training and shit. Yeah, but know? not at this age. No. She probably... She falls fall when those here. bowls crack, she'll sever her head. Yeah. No, she will not. And There's a massive chance. Yeah. What is your guys' deal? What's I was your thinking problem? More like broken Chop neck, it right like off. exploded score. Or <laughs> AJ, yeah. don't be encouraging this. Nope. Let's get out of here. Shouts, Red Panda. Shout Shout love you, Red Panda. Panda. Love you, Red Panda. How about AQ throwing his balls? Pretty good. Right, yeah. Pretty good Point. throws. There was one he threw a little juice yeah, high and outside. Yeah, that's the one that dropped. And she, yeah, it might have been. We haven't looked Thanks at the timing. He's been off or not. AQ did great. As did you, Darius. Thank you for your work. AJ, great, great, wor uh, great work this week. All the boys, great work this week. Hell of a week. Honorable week. Legendary week. Hell and yeah. let's have an amazing weekend. Uh, let's be nice to each other. Mm -hmm. Let's say kind things. Even if we don't mean them, let's deliver them as if we do so that that person thinks that you did. And then you just both go your separate ways and maybe a little bit better feeling was on the interaction. Hell yeah. Boom. That's what life is. Let's make the world a better place. Let's be nice to each other. We'll see you on Overreaction Monday. With so much fallout from the NFL draft, the NHL playoffs, the NBA playoffs, right, and the Janet Jackson concert that's happening tonight in State Farm Arena mm -hmm. down there in Atlanta that got postponed for the Atlanta Hawks to lose last night. Hell Although yeah. Trey Young is a fucking dog. dog. They will have to be getting over their playoff loss yep. with Janet Jackson tonight. No Still way. nice. Love you, Janet. Janet was an absolute dog. Mm -hmm. That concert's going to be incredible. Mm -hmm. I hope Trey Young goes and has a good time because the performance he put on is championship worthy. Well, I don't think I don't think I'd go that far, but yeah, he played well. He hit a step back in your city's fucking face. And to go down three two, hats off to him. <laughs> Have a good weekend, everybody. <laughs> we'll see you on Monday. Goodbye.